Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to day two of the Archon Team League Championships, brought to you by G2A and Alpha Draft. My name is Frodan. and today I'll be joined by Reckful, who's coming in in just a minute, and we can go ahead and introduce day number two. For anybody who just missed yesterday, we kicked off the league with two great matches, all best of 11s that went pretty close to the distance. One of them did end up going to game 11. Another one was pretty close, but in the end, Team Value Town took down Cloud9. As you can currently look at the standings, we have Nylum and Value Town grabbing the first wins, but... We have eight weeks of play. So even though some of your favorite teams might be down at the moment, in the end, we do have a lot of games to play. One thing that you also want to pay attention to is the fact that there's game win scores on top of wins and losses. That'll be known as a tiebreaker. And it's just simply how well they do in the series. Even if they go 0-1, if Team Archon keeps going 6-5 and five and manage to pull even with another team, uh, they'll end up having the tiebreaker. The way the team league is broken down, we have eight teams of three players each. Some of them are some of the most established teams, if you have in all the industry, with Tempo Storm, Team Liquid. Uh, you know, we have a lot of players from different good franchises like TSM, but they end up making their own team as well under uh, Team Value Town, as you can see in the upper right of your screen. The schedule today will be as follows. We have Team Force and Boys versus Tempo Storm to lead things off, and then we have Team Celestial versus Team Liquid. That's going to be a good time as... I think people are really anxious to see how the other All-Star squad will do. Team Forsen Boys is led by Forsen, but they have really good strong players like Chalky and Ozkaka rounding out the roster. So I guess the Rekful is uh, we're still going to be waiting for him to come in in just a, a second here. But let's go ahead and explain how the team league will actually function. I believe the top four will be going to the finals. Uh, we're going to be playing a best of five conquest format where each player brings two decks for a total of six per team. And each match is blind pick like normal Conquest. So if, say, Kalento from Cloud9 plays one match, the next match anybody can play. It could be Kalento again or Strife Crow, win or lose. Uh, the lock decks cannot be picked again for those that win. So just like in normal Conquest, as soon as you win with a deck, it's eliminated. The first team to get six wins will be the victor. And you can go ahead to teamarchon.com league to find out all the, the rules as well as the standings. Uh, speaking of which, we will have two teams that automatically advance to the live finale. We'll call that Phase 3. But before we do that, we have a couple of playoff rounds where teams can continue to stay alive in the tournament. But the team that ends in 8th place, they're gone. They're eliminated. Uh, unfortunately, they're going to have to uh, try again some other time. But teams 6 and 7 will play through a redemption tournament where only one of them will go to the satellite phase and ultimately play for the top two spots to go for the live finale. Now it's going to be all for 250,000 US dollars, the biggest prize pool in comparison to BlizzCon. In fact, I think no other tournaments will match that um, outside of WCA last year, which also hit around that range. And uh, that's pretty much it for the opening homework. Uh, our first match, like we said, was Force and Boys versus Tempo Storm. And it's pretty interesting to me because Tempo Storm is playing without their team captain, owner, and Salt Lord, Raynad. In fact, they have their new player, Eloise, from China, who's going to be filling in there for the entire team league. And, um, of course, we have me and Reckful here. So the Tempo Storm bias will be pretty real. Just going to go ahead and warm everybody. But at the same time, we do recognize that there's a lot of fans for the Forsen boys as well. Not just for Forsen, but I know Chalky's also recently picked up some popularity for his casting. Uh, not to mention that Oskaka is also starting to get noticed. Um, I heard an interesting statistic a couple of weeks ago that according to Blizzard internal servers, if you measure the volume of games uh, over the win percentage or whatever way you want to do it mathematically, I'm not, I'm not a pro, Oskaka, according to Blizzard statistics, is the best ladder player in the world. I'm not exactly sure how to quantify that if it's like any player that's played X amount of games, like 10,000 games or something. But um, he has the highest win percentage. So either he's played a lot of Hunter or he's really good. All right, so I believe Reckful might even be here. Are you there, man? Yeah, I can hear No, me? no. Wait, yes, I can hear you. Okay. What's up, dude? Hey, uh, sorry. I was AFK. <laughs> I didn't guard no worries, you, though. Man. I didn't leave you for a whole game. <laughs> Duty yeah. calls. I hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you told them? No, I didn't tell them anyway. I just said oh, that okay, you were yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Duty called, duty called. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. So, uh, what's up, dude? You haven't cast in a while. You feel up for a challenge? Uh, yeah, yeah. I haven't casted since the thing with Crip. Uh, with, I forgot what it's called even, the, the, the arena thing. 
Yeah, the Lord of the Arena. What have you been up to, yeah. Rifle? Um, well, I've been playing Hearthstone a little bit. Uh, it just, I got kind of bored at the beginning of the season last season. Mm-hmm. Just fighting Grim Patron over and over. You weren't playing Grim Patron yourself, or were you, what were you playing? No, 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 just playing against Grim Patron over and over. Gotcha. And then, uh, uh, I went on a good win streak with, like, Echo on stream. And then I stopped playing for the rest of the season. But then I, um, other than that, I've been playing Final Fantasy VII. You know, some really exciting streams. Wait, what? Why VII? Because, you know, they're remaking it, so I wanted to play it for some reason. I had, oh, okay, okay. Right, I right, played right. it as a kid, so I wanted to play it again. And, you know, I killed the Emerald Weapon today. No big deal. Nice. Nice. Yeah. And that's it. I didn't actually finish Final Fantasy VII myself. Oh, it was you too suck. frustrating. It's too frustrating. It was hard. I'm a casual noob. That's why I play Hearthstone. Wow. <laughs> what, what rank are you in Hearthstone? Uh, last well, la- last season I finished at like rank like 400 legend or something. I wasn't I wasn't anything special. Okay, okay. <clears throat> That's not super casual, you know. It's like they, it says at the beginning of the screen. You know, when I turned my screen on, it said top point two five percent. They used to say top point five percent after you get legend. Yeah, there's more people playing Hearthstone now, though, so Legend's getting a smaller percentage. Even though in China, I heard that there's last season had 20,000 Legends. Jesus. Um, that was like the new record <laughs> of like how many people actually made it to Legend. Yeah, and, so. and uh, more people play in EU than NA, it seems like, too, right? Because uh, EU Legend, well, other, time, other seasons I've looked, there are like 4,000 EU Legends, and we have like 2,000 or something. Yeah, I think just in general, like Europe... Is just a little bit more competitive. Like North America is generally more casual, and also sh- like that's the whole point of uh, the region. It's like shoulder attention span, so they can't like grind out to legend as easily. Hmm. Sorry, I fixed it. Okay, no worries. We're trying to get the rectal cam up. Until then, he's just a black floating space. Uh, I go like ahead and once again, <laughs> <laughs> once again, talk about the tournament format. Just to remind anybody coming, because we recognize that the stream is just starting up, is that we're going to only have four teams uh, going to the live finale. And that's going to be offline, where we get the entire teams out there, which is pretty cool, because we haven't had that team dynamic in Hearthstone uh, since the fight night days offline. People have offline moments where on camera where they're talking to teammates or you know playing against their own teammates one-on-one. But this is a team format at its core. Like they work together to prepare strategies. You can't repeat decks. So somebody will have to play a less meta class than other people. We saw Shaman yesterday be able to take a win. Um, we, still, we saw Paladin a couple times yesterday also. So even though you know you might be like Wreckful and be like, well, I'm kind of bored of watching Patron Warrior or watching you know, Zoo other stuff. versus Hunters. You, there is a good diversity of stuff. Not to mention yesterday. Uh, Patron had a really awful win rate, Wreckful. I think you'd be really happy to hear that. Cool. Yeah. You know, I, I actually, uh, I was beating Patron as Freeze Mage. I didn't know Freeze Mage beats Patron, but you fatigue them. Well, I mean, you, they can only do so much damage from the hand. And as long, you don't really play minions. They have to play their own minions, and you just kill their board with Flame Strike, right? Well, yeah, yeah. No, but you can't, you can't actually kill them ever because, you know, they execute your two minions that matter. But then, <laughs> yeah. then you fatigue, uh, and then they have like thirty armor from you have it to flame strike with armorsmiths down. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, sometimes if they use battle rage, at least then you they fatigue first and you win. But sometimes since they have thirty armor, that you die to fatigue first. And it, it's a uh, really exciting stuff, you know, fatigue games. It, it can yeah. be, it can be, but generally speaking, I know you're being uh, facetious. I don't really find fatigue games when I'm playing it. I don't find it that exciting. When when people are watching oh. it, it's pretty epic because sometimes you see like the five versus six damage. And uh, yesterday I saw this cool post in the Tavern Brawl. I don't know if you've played it, but uh, you know the Tavern Brawl is like the web spinners with class spells. And uh, well, there's this one guy that had two Malorns versus another guy's Malorn, and they were both at fatigue, and one person was at one HP. So he kept killing Malorns so that he go back in the deck, so he never drew fatigue damage. And uh-huh. the other guy was a warrior, so he could never do like direct damage to him. It was really funny. Huh. What? Uh, yeah, so we're about to uh, get ready for the first match of the day. I believe it was uh, Force and Boys versus Temple Storm once again. And in order to do that, we just want to go ahead and introduce some of the players. So let's queue up this video and see what we have in store so you guys can get to know the players a little bit more. Uh, I'm Force and, and I'm playing for Team Force and Boys. Uh, I'm mostly known for my Miracle Rogue plays back in the days. 
Now I'm more of an aggressive player uh, that plays a lot of aggro in tournaments. Uh, the format of the team league seems really, really good to me. Uh, you have to actually make use of the team components, like uh, finding team members that are actually good with different kind of classes to be able to perform in one of these tournaments. I would uh, advise younger Star Hearthstone players, if they want to become good at the game, uh, to watch a lot of streams from those streamers who uses your kind of decks that you like to play, because you have to enjoy the decks you are playing, otherwise you'll never get good at them. I want to uh, thank all my fans for supporting me and my channel, and uh, of course supporting Team Force and Boys in this tournament. Alright, well you guys got to see Force in a little bit more, but I'm pretty sure he's one of the most high profile players out there considering his stream is immensely popular. And he'll be captaining his own team squad. You know, how do you think Force and Boys will do against Tempo Storm? Your boys, Wreckful. Yeah, it could go either way, it doesn't. I don't know. I don't believe uh at, at top Hearthstone level, I don't really believe it skills that different, you know, it's just like and these people are both uh good at making decks. Gara prides himself on being like the best deck builder ever, you know, but he kind of sucks. We'll see. He kind of sucks. No, 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 no. no. Wow. Just Damn. Uh, yeah, yeah. We I fire shots at him sometimes because he didn't show up for my one match when he was supposed to be with me, you know. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, during yeah. that team league thing that Archon also held, right? Where you and uh -huh. Gara. Ah, I remember that play. Okay, the dude. Uh, oh, don't play. talk about what that. Don't that? talk about that. What yeah, is that? I didn't play Hearthstone right. in like two for months, anyone, For anyone who didn't know, we, we can go ahead and, and walk through the classes in just a second, but Gar mm -hmm. and Rekful played this team match together in the Archon team league before this happened. It was a team brawl. And they were playing up against a Freeze Mage, and they were a zoo deck, and uh, they just had to bop, pop the ice block, and the Freeze Mage was at 9 HP. So what he did was he played Doom Guard and then played Power Woming on the Doom Guard and popped the ice block at 9 HP, which ended up costing the game because the Doom Guard died. <laughs> and then you end up uh, not being able to stabilize on the board. It was pretty epic. It was pretty epic. It was epic. tight. It was yeah. nice. It was, like taking, it was actually impressive to find the optimal play to lose the game because you guys were in such a It was almost impossible position. to lose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the nice thing was, though, um, um, we almost still won. Yeah, you should have won because it was like 3-2 the series, right? We got right? them to one health. <laughs> And uh, yeah, and we won all our other games. We won with my deck every time, the mage deck. <coughs> yeah, the really cool value mage, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With Karen. That was sick. Yeah, I was really cool and impressed with uh, some of the decks that you guys brought. But, well, alas, that was the past, and now Gara has new teammates, new and improved. Ah, uh, too bad. We have Eloise from China, who's also bringing Warlock and Druid. And Forsen has uh, Chaki and Oskaka as his, quote, new teammates. Um, Looks like they have the same lineup outside of Rogue and Mage. That seems to be the difference here. And we're going to kick it off with Chalky versus Paladin. Now, this is normally where we comment on the art. Do you think it's an Whoa. accurate depiction? That really Chalky. looks like hype. That's crazy. I've known how hype since 2008. So, we're old friends. But That's hype him. looks pretty old, like he's in a mafia. He looks Chalky, looks, Chalky looks slightly Asian in this picture. Yeah, the Chalky one's not that good. I'm they got down. the Dignitas hoodie down, though. The uh, the black and the yellow. That's it's interesting yeah. because in the past, and okay, so yesterday they had a bunch of characteristics to the players that would like, you know, be iconic to them. So, for example, they had uh, you know, they had Shrivekro with a bamboo stick. So at least they gave him some personality because he likes to call himself the panda. But there's like nothing with this art at all. It's just two guys staring in love at each other. Yeah. That's, mm. It's, okay. Uh, nice, just not a nice moment between guys. <laughs> a bromance over Hearthstone. Taste right, Paladin taste. versus uh, Warrior here. Uh, this aggro Paladin has been gaining a lot of popularity recently. Oh, I hate this. You hate this deck, <laughs> or you hate this match? Yeah, no, I hate the aggro Paladin. Why, why do you hate it? Well, you know, sometimes they just like king something, and you can't do anything about it. And you're just dead. And even if they don't kings anything, you're just dead. And they Leroy and smile. They actually run Leroy. Leroy's bad. Yeah, they do because Leroy turns out does damage to the face. Yeah. Um. And, and the the key to this deck in general is just the early game curve and and doing well. But it has so many one drops. In fact, Chalky even runs Worgen Infiltrator. That's another one drop that 
Maybe he replaced Argent Squire with, but the point is, there's eight one drops or more, and so no you way, never have Argent Squire. That's like the yeah. best one. You always can play other stuff. But what would you else would you play? You replace he doesn't replace Abusive Sergeant. That's too valuable, and you don't want to kill off the Leopard. Uh, huh, maybe he has less uh, high, bigger drops. Yeah, some people run like one um, the, the Argent Protector or whatever. The guy that bubbles someone. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe he cuts something like that. Drop. Okay. So he just has more one drops. That's the yeah, answer. Yeah, one drops are king, man. Well, they are in this scenario if you can flood them. Um, Heights is playing control warrior, by the way. No patron warrior. So that's worse for him because he doesn't have whirlwind. Probably. He doesn't have anything to do until. He really needs world. Like if he was a patron warrior, he could just press whirlwind. He wins the game right here. And that's fun. Yeah. Um, but now that he doesn't, it doesn't. It almost doesn't matter at a certain point if you drop a bunch of taunters because he has so many things on the board to pick off good trades, and he also has true silver champion. Yeah. So he's gonna coin Belcher into Belcher. Yep. Appearance. And depending on how the situation goes, most likely try to go for a board control play, like with Sylvanas, or if he's really low on health, he might have to go Dude, heal. Two hahas and. Oh my god. Oh, just one haha this turn. Yeah, you don't necessarily need to because. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to. You don't necessarily even need to hero power there. You can just draw a lot of cards for next turn. Oh, jeez. This is starting to get really crazy damage wise. Yeah. Yeah, I'm screwed. <laughs> <clears throat> um, well, never say never. He could also randomly have a whirlwind in the next draw. We don't know the decks in uh, fully at all. Ooh, that ordering though. If he was able to get that yeah. a little earlier. Yeah. So, with the juice over coming out next turn and the blessing of might, that's seven plus three, ten, twelve. No. Oh, hold on. How much is this? Five, uh, seven, ten damage by my account. I believe he can put him down to one HP. Or maybe I counted wrong. Am I bad at math, Rackful? Nah. Oh, yes, I am. It's exactly lethal. Oh, you're bad at math. Yeah. But no, you're not bad at math. You're not bad Ch at math. Chalky's not bad at math, though. All right, anyway, well. if you didn't have lethal, you just fucked anyway. <laughs> yeah, you, there was Next really turn, nothing that you could he do. He belchers again. He's still screwed through the belcher. Even if he didn't draw the owl that turn, he just true silver it. Mm -hmm. And hype can't have time to put on Death's Bite and get the whirlwind effect. So. Yeah. And uh, I think that's a scenario which just, just goes to show you that um, this aggressive paladin, like he said, is designed to really punish a lot of those slower decks. And just there's sometimes you can't do anything if you don't have the right cards. But it's just game one of the best of 11. There's plenty of more games. Um, we've seen people go up to three games and just the score equalizes because you have a lot of time to, you know, corner decks and figure out what's the weak points of the lineup. Because again, this is um, this is Conquest, so you're only as good as your worst deck that you play. Yeah. Um, huh. I wonder which Warlock they brought. Uh, on Forsen's side, I would have to imagine it's got to be the Zoo. But he also has been playing Handlock recently on stream, I think. Um, I, I try not to tune in too much to Forsen's stream for my own brain cells' sake. But I, I do see him once in a while play the handlock. He is known to play Zoo primarily. And I know Heloise really likes to play handlock, but I also seen her play Zoo in tournaments. So it's it's kinda hard to say. The one thing that I don't think we'll see is on Temple Storm's side is the Mali Ghost Warlock, if I have to guess, because I don't know if they think very highly of that deck in general. Yeah. They were talking about how uh how weak they think it was. Even though it performed pretty well at Dreamhack. Have you played that deck at all? Yeah, it's pretty good. Sometimes, sometimes you have several turns where you're not doing anything though, and you're just clearing stuff. Um, but I mean, like any deck with Malagos in it, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably a little bit. There, there was like a Malagos Shaman mm -hmm. deck where you ancestors call him out in one shot. Yeah, that yeah, that deck's yeah. awesome, man. Yeah, yeah, I played that deck a lot. Uh, and it's fun because somehow you never die because you're just dropping mana tides and all these things that they have to kill, mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, the Vitality Totem and stuff. Yeah. And it, you just... I've had, I had games against Hunter that fatigued somehow <laughs> with that deck. Vitality Totem is the Absolutely. best thing in the world against Hunter. It's crazy. You're a liar. No, really. Mm -hmm. It's the only time you ever fatigue versus Smork. Well, there was actually this one game that Crypt played with um, 
Mill Rogue, where you play the gang ups on the cold lights, and he healed something absurd. Like he healed up to seventy health, something like that, into the entire game because he put like yeah, gang, yeah, gang up on the up heal buff. Heal buff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, he, it went to fatigue, but the hunter beat him by like exact damage. It was like his last card, and he had exact damage to kill him. Oh, I played deal. that it actually won, you know, because I'm not casual yeah. crypt. Oh, oh, okay. Snap. But uh, this is what happened. This is what happened yeah, when yeah. was unchained and not casting with crypt. I like it. I don't know. I'd, I'd say that casting with crypt too. <laughs> I see it. Um... Oh, never All mind. Right, That's um... the past. Yeah, okay. no worries, no worries. I don't think we'll see any of that. I think, uh, no, I mean, Shaman and Priest aren't even represented in today's lineups at all. In fact, we haven't seen Priest at all in the past two days. Maybe we'll see it next next match. I feel like Team Celestial would be the team that might bring it. Um, but why do you think Priest wouldn't even be included in a field this big? They, they do have some okay matchups against the field sometimes, like a um, couple of them. It's not, it's not like they'll lose against every class, right? I haven't played that much Priest. Um, but Priest get okay. Priest is good against Hunter. I don't know how it does against Grim Patron. Druid beats Priest. Rogue beats Priest every time. But not a lot of people are playing Rogue either. I'm surprised. We, well, I, I'm not surprised Hype has Rogue, but you know. Um, I guess Priest oh. is that good. Oh my god! But it does beat Smork. Priest beats Smork. It it can, and it's also good against um, all kinds of Paladin too. All right, well, looking at this, Forsen... What? They made Forsen like a seven-year-old boy. Eloise, of course, is just this cute yeah, cat, I guess. Yeah, Because yeah, yeah. she plays a bunch of cat music on her stream. I haven't watched it yet. Is it good? The cat music or the stream? Both. Uh, yeah, I mean, it depends. I Personally... I like watching players like Strikro and Savit and Kalento because I really like to learn. And uh, oh, she's, she's, she's fired. She's turning into like well female force in a way. I tell her, I was oh. like, is this what you want? And she's like, I don't know. I don't even know what half of the words that people are saying. So you're saying you don't Kinda learn neat. if you watch someone like Force it? No, it's not, I. It's not I an educational I, stream? It reaffirms what I thought about the internet. Okay. All right, uh, we have Warlock versus Druid, by the way, and Druid off to, well, it looks okay, like it'd be growth. a really good start. Wild Growth into Keeper, which is Wait, can you see probably the, the best can thing you ever. you see the Warlock's hand? Um, not yet, not yet. I'm okay. about to. I, must protect the I would be surprised to see if it was Handlock. Yeah, this, this makes sense. The Zoo seems to be iconic to what Forzen does. And the Keeper is a really nice card just against Keeper's any great. kind of Warlock. Uh, oh my gosh. Wow. Hmm. The Druid's hand is crazy. Wait, wait. Druids need a crazy hand to beat Zoo, though. Yeah, it's true. Uh, and even if you have a crazy hand, you might not win. So. Yeah. Now, do you think he uh, keepers, or do you think he wall growth? Um, Greet you. I'm guessing you can afford to My greetings. to uh, wild growth here. Okay, he's keeper. I mean, you can also stop it, but at the same time, the keeper can also trade into this um, into this flame imp, yeah. and then you're playing with loft curve. I think either way is kind of fine, to be honest. Yeah. She also has swipe, so that's going to be really useful against some of these one ones that will come out, whether it's through yeah. implosion or the the haunted creeper. When I was thinking about wrath versus wild growth, hmm. I think wild growth here. Actually, I don't mind what Wrath either, considering that um, the Keeper is like your only minion that you're playing. And then yeah, you're not yeah. playing Emperor Thor's in next turn anyway, so you can Wild Growth plus Hero Power next turn. Yeah, but there are a lot of. There's so many fives you can draw into in this kind of deck. Because you have probably Belcher, Drew to the Claw, yeah. you know, whatever. That's a good point. Now, you would kill off this Haunted Creeper to play around things like Knife Juggler. Even though you put more power on the board, ultimately you take yeah, yeah. less damage potential out. Put this apple on your head. Oh man, swipe's gonna be pretty Swipe sick. Time. Well, he, he'll trade if the knife hits, maybe. I think the uh, he should trade. Yeah, definitely yeah, should trade. So now swipe gets less sick. If that knife didn't hit though, he would go face and get raided by swipe, and it would full clear. Because swipe, yeah, swipe knife shot plus kill. Uh, yeah, and that would have almost been a, a runaway at that point, I think, if it um, didn't hit. Forsen's still even contemplating whether or not he can get away with not mm. trading here and going He's face. He's going to trade. You sure about just, that? 
Yeah, you just look at it, you're like, oh, the thing's even gonna live with one health if he has swipe, you know, when he kills your boy. Yeah. There's no way. Okay, so you're another wall, you're. Well, I'll go she, here is... Sorry, yeah. I called her a he. It's a she. I'm so nah. used to say he. No worries, me too. I, I did the same exact thing when I was um, casting other people in the past. Yeah, Druid had a pretty crazy hand, and it's not looking too good. I mean, he gets Emperor next turn, but... She! She! Oh my god. <laughs> okay, she gets Emperor next turn, but it's not going to reduce uh, any cards. Anyway. Yeah, the second wild growth doesn't really do much, actually. Um, yeah. Just kind of sits there. Would have been nice to have... Uh... A keeper that turn or something. Another keeper that's lucky, but you know, uh, lucky just is important. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a bad card. But he has Malganis. It is a bad card still, though. Like, you will need it for Malganis, but that that's not relevant for a long time. Yeah, it's gonna be an important card if it goes that long. But realistically, if she doesn't pick up anything else, she might just play it for the tempo board position. But Thorson being dropped on this board will almost certainly get traded away by Knife Juggler plus whatever juggle yeah. damage. Yeah. And after that, your hand's looking pretty weak. There's going to be another Knife Juggler dropped in something. And uh, she's pretty screwed. Yeah, the other option is to go for Big Game Hunter and a swipe now, but the swipe doesn't do anything other than remove yeah. one minion. Well, I was, I'm saying she's pretty screwed, but actually if she runs um, Ancient of War, she's not screwed. She'll draw that next turn. But other than that, I can't think of a draw that gets her out of this next turn. And even having that swipe it isn't going to do anything. Mm, maybe a uh, second swipe. Oh my god, and you, you can knife juggle her and abusive and just kill it. Yeah, I mean this is kind of what Zoo does to Druid in a nutshell. This is just a really tough matchup in general. Okay, so this, just one knife needs to hit out of these two knives. And it hit. We overkill it by that's one. A, yeah, that's a little unfortunate for Forson, but he still got the uh, the juggles. Nah. Like, the, the important juggle was earlier. He got the important juggle. This other juggle doesn't matter. He's missing one damage to the face, but earlier earlier he would have gotten full cleared by Swipe. And that Swipe is just sitting in her hand now doing nothing. You know? Well, not not completely nothing. If this not goes completely into the Forson... Uh, she's, I mean, she's probably dead in two turns. I'm trying to think of a series of draw. Maybe Azure Drake. If you, she get, picks up an Azure Drake off the swipe, it'd be pretty Yeah, nuts. now that the swipe costs three, Azure Drake swipe can happen, and it's pretty crazy. So Azure Drake would just leave a Void Walker with two health, and if he mm -hmm. trades... He didn't trade. Yeah, he's just going full face. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, that's a good draw. Well, let's see. Uh, so, I mean, she can swipe the 4-3... Hit the 2-4, and she has a 6 health taunt. It's okay. Yeah, and then the 6 health taunt means that she that was, still that dies draw was, to... She had to draw 5 taunt here. Yeah. And she did. It, like it had to be Belcher or Drew the Claw, or she lost. Or Drake. Yeah, it's basically like any 5 drop that was in the deck that wasn't like Harrison Jones if she's running it, or Lotheb if she's running it. Yeah. So... There's a chance. Yeah. Now, now her Druid of the Claw is going to die to Power Overwhelming on the Argus, probably. Mm -hmm. And then the knife's going to finish off the um, the uh, well, Emperor. Assuming probably. she draws some, uh, assuming Forrest draws a minion, but he most likely will. He will. Oh, you're saying the Nightjar will not draw a minion. You're, you could draw Implosion. You could, you could draw another Power Overwhelming and Implosion. Tap into Implosion, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Or yeah, you can just draw Doomguard and might win the game. It's a minion, right so. Yeah. Where shall I strike? No matter what, there's going to be a minion played. Most likely. I Unless mean, he runs Dark Bomb or something. Yeah. That's a minion. It's a minion, but it's not the it's game a nice. ending. Oh, one card off. Okay, so. That would have almost would have been. hit it in, and this is an important knife again. Yeah, hitting the knife on the Emperor Thorson would be really big. Hitting on the knife on Emperor Thorson's game. Oh! That's, that's it. Well, not necessarily game. Oh, yeah. Belcher! Not necessarily game. Yep. Yeah. Look, Belcher. Save the yeah. game. Yeah. But, the um, 
But forcing can just draw the owl. That's pretty much like how it happens from this point on. I wonder if Eloise is going to drop this big game hunter just so maybe she can pick up Savage Roar and threaten lethal if he taps too much. Because that'd be 4, 7, 13. Yeah. Eh, it's not even really even seeing the Malganus in hand, I still like it being dropped. Mm -hmm. You do too, right? Uh, yeah, I'm not against it. I know it's like really risky for Implosion to get an easy target and then you just lose the board even more. Yeah, but she's just so far behind right now. It definitely had to take some risks. Ah, well, Forsen drew something pretty awkward here. The Void Terror is normally a pretty decent tempo play onto the board, but... It's, it's you know, really he also... egg, but he, yeah, he drew it on a bad turn. Oh, oh my wow. goodness! That's crazy. Wow, Forsen is drawing so well right now. And, um... Well, he still has, like, the lethal very closely looming to end this game soon. Okay. Yeah, seven, six. Seven, six. Oh wait, now he has a big game, game hunter. hunter target. <laughs> oh, that's uh, not really useful at all. You know, and he might just discard his Belgatus next turn. Probably not though. He might do it. Uh, if he's, she's probably yeah. dead. If she's not doing it. She's probably screwed too. Uh, man, that innervate draw though. Yeah, the this, innervate. Good draws last two turns, but this. I've got the beast. Yeah, those five drops that she picked up were really useful. Almost like matching. Oh, she's gonna go down to the uh, wire, go uh, down to one. If you run Bane of Doom, it could just hit face. Oh, you're right. Bane of Doom. And it Doom. summons a demon, just just by the way. Huh? Wow. This is getting increasingly awkward. It's interesting. Um Wow. Okay, so is Forsen worried about dying at all? If his, if his opponent picks up Savage Roar, there's 5 plus 6, hmm. 7 would be uh, 12. So no, he's, he's still safe. Okay, that's a pretty Our decent egg. draw. Yeah. Alright. Ellie needs some help, though. She needs to get... It's a Taunt or a Keeper or something. Yeah. Oh, she does run here since she could have drawn that 5 <clears throat> here and lost. This is a... She got a good five. Yeah, and I think this draw means it's game over. That's game, yeah, it's game. There's nothing that she can do here because the Harrison Jones means that, uh... That belongs well, I mean, I she hate, can't even stop on board. Huh? I hate playing Druid versus Zoo. It's not fun. <laughs> she, yes. like, look at her hand at the beginning, we're like, oh, she has Wild Growth and Keeper yeah. and Innervate. Yeah. So Still lost. So it wasn't even that close. Suffer. Nature will rise. Alright, so this Doom Guard will wrap up the game and force him boys off to a 2-0 start. Force him with a little bit of BM here. Just playfully greeting her and kind of showing his hand too. Like revealing that the Doom Guard, he even had Malganus. So he has Malganus too. Yeah. Doesn't really matter though because Fortune's Warlock is out and force him boys off to a really good start. And people were looking at Forsen Boys and saying that they're probably um, a really strong dark horse that people necessarily aren't counting on to do really well, but they have a really solid lineup, uh, in my opinion. Yeah. Though you can't judge anything. I'm not trying to defend Temple Storm. I don't really care about like, drama like that. I just, you can't really judge anything by those two games because anyone could have played those two games and they'd go the same way. You know, they could switch places and Forsen couldn't have done anything as a Druid. So it doesn't. And also, in the previous game, they could switch places, and the warrior obviously couldn't do anything. He was dead on turn five. <laughs> yeah. And he only got to play one, two cards. So. I mean, you can always argue about uh, that's the nature of what happens when their matchups line up that way, but also they chose to bring decks like that. If Hype yeah, chose the, the to bring... Deck, yeah, what decks they chose to bring and all that was important. But in the actual games we just watched, and this isn't true in every game, just those games we just watched, they could switch sides and other, you know, the same class would win, would have won. And everyone we can agree, I'm sure. Sure, but the series is still Definitely far. Definitely on the Pally versus Warrior. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I agree with for that for sure. Um, but at least in this case, the uh, the the series is still far from over. It's best of eleven, and there's still a chance where one player just doesn't win. Yesterday we saw Clenta go zero four for his entire team. He couldn't grab a single win, even though Cloud Nine seemed to be in a pretty good spot. In terms of like how the lineups were looking, they had a pretty good lineup. And uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Whoa, hmm? what's going on? 
I didn't see yeah. that. I, didn't, I was playing Final Fantasy VII. That's interesting. Uh, <laughs> uh, the what happened was Clento kept he got benched actually at one point. There's a bench rule in this team league recful where if you lose two in a row, you're not allowed to queue up the same player again. It, you have to switch. So this is to prevent one player from like sitting there and playing five games in a row until they mm-hmm. win. Type. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um. So uh, are we having Gara now, or does it not? It, it could be anybody. Chalky right, right. now it could be the same. Forcing can play again. I would guess that Gara might come out here with Hunter or something like that. Oh no! Eloise goes with Druid again, and this time it's up against Mage. And if it's against Tempo Mage, it's once again a really bad matchup for her. If it's against Freeze Mage, though, Druids beat Freeze Mages up most of the time. Pretty sure Forcing will play Tempo Mage, though. It seems to be right up his uh, recent alley. Like in terms See? of what Forcing does, he pretty much plays what he plays on stream. I rarely see Forsen nowadays play something that he kind of plays off stream for a while. Um, he used to do that in the in, in the past, where he would build like really weird decks, like Yasera double molten druid. Like he'd play that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but nowadays, Forsen just kind of practices on stream with what he has. Yeah, I would guess it's Temple Mage. Hmm. But you're right. If it's Freeze Mage, on the other hand, then. It'd be excellent. Forsen used to love bringing Freeze Mage all the time, like all the time. Yeah, I've been playing this. I've been playing Freeze Mage with Malagos. It's pretty fun. And it is Freeze Mage. Oh, it is Freeze Mage. Good call. Oh. Okay, so I've played a lot of Freeze Mage. Druid's really hard to beat. And yeah, I, I, I beat the, I beat the hard matchups match. sometimes. Like like uh, I, I beat Warriors occasionally. Where Warrior, Control Warrior is the hardest one. Grim Patron Warrior you actually beat is Freeze Mage. Mm-hmm. And then um. Druid was for sure my worst. Uh, Freeze Mages really beat Warlocks, though. That, that's what they're best. 100% win. I have a 100% win versus Warlocks on my Freeze Mage deck, like over 17 games of against Warlock. Yeah, primarily the zoo Warlock. is where it's super favored against. Uh, Handlock can be difficult if they play Ragnaros, um, but generally speaking, you're. you're it, uh, yeah, up. I haven't seen Rag and Handlock recently. Yeah, but yeah, if, you, yeah, if, if they play Rag, it gets hard. Otherwise, they can't really hit you with anything ever, and they just die. So there's a few keys to this matchup, and it's primarily on the Druid side. Um, Freeze Mage will just do whatever it can. It wants to draw cards and not take too much damage. Uh, But the keys for the Druid is the pressure that it can build up. Um, Being able to even armor up with its hero power is really useful, because if they get the Alexstrasza down, then you're going to be at... 17, 18. Yeah, and that's still hard to reach through damage. I... What do you think about that Alex Strauss nerf? That was a long time ago, but you used to remove armor. Do you, I don't know if you even played. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, what do you think? Do you think it should have uh, should have been nerfed? <laughs> uh, I think I think it should have been. That's just a little bit too crazy. Oh, there's only a few classes that are situational to it, but it's it's a little you know silly. What do you think that, about armor? And, what do you think uh, about armor smith? Like, what do you think about warriors getting? You know, you have two, armor smith down, they get flame strike or something, and they get all the armor. What? For that, you think that's fair? I'm just, I'm just wondering. I'm not. I don't know. Yeah. I don't have a. I think so. Oh, you think it's fair? I think, I think okay. it gives control players an option to like really be defensive. If it wasn't there, control warrior would suck a lot more. Especially maybe against specifically aggro. when getting AOE, the armor smith should like function differently and die first, just on AOE, because on AOE it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, like, that's true. Sometimes did you just see that video with Tides back in the day where he got like four hundred armor in one turn or something like that with Pyromancer? No, it was I like, see that. He had crazy. like commanding shout and he like played Pyromancer and he just kept getting like whirlwind yeah. effects the entire time because he had uh-huh. like a million spells. It was crazy. Yeah. And in real in normal games, warriors actually get up to like forty armor. If they get double armor smith, then you have to AoE it. So Yeah. This is also pretty important that if Eloise gets this win, then Forsen hangs on to Freeze Mage, and there's also another class like Control Warrior out there for Hyped. So, you know, there's ways for... Um, right. There's really ways to corner a lineup if you really have something good and get some wins on it. Because the reason why it would be important is if you have a lot of other things that are good against Control Warrior, because say like a lot of decks are running Harrison, um, you can try to get a win out easily. And then uh, be able to leverage that, so that way you have a better lineup going into the rest of the series. I'll uh, okay. So she wants to save her keeper for Doomsayer, probably. Yeah. 
And then, um, I'll be really surprised if Forsen wins this game. Because, first of all, Druid's really hard, and she has Lothab. Lothab's an important card. Yeah, Lothab's really strong, considering that sometimes you can kill the Druid if you get the Alex Straza, the ice block is up, and you have the damage. With Emperor Thorsen also coming into the metagame, that also improved the Freeze Mage against Druid win rates. I don't know if it improved it, because the Druid getting the Emperor is a big deal, too. That's true, but you're with the you, now you're not as restricted based off of like damage range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it probably improved it a little. It's it's a emperor's for freeze Ma emperor for freeze mage is amazing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing for druid too, but I th yeah, I, I I think I agree. It's a little better for druid. All right, for mage. Okay. okay. What? Well, oh, look, heal just... bot when you're at twenty two. Yeah, that's pretty much exactly what. Um... He would like, assuming that he couldn't just deal with the Shredder. But the fact is, the Shredder still goes uncontested. Because yeah. this is a swipe, right? And then when you swipe, you just still take damage. And yeah. you're not even, you're, sn you're not any closer to like doing major draws with, um, uh, oh, sorry, you're not getting close because you have to use your draws to get to Alex Straza. Can you win this matchup without Alex Straza? Um, with Malagos, you can. That's true. Maligos Freeze Mage is awesome. Yeah, that's really affected by Emperor. It's crazy. <laughs> if you, you get Emperor down when you have Frost Bolts and Ice Lances, you, mm -hmm. uh, you can just one-shot them. Yeah, there it is. The Alex Straza. One thing that's also important to know is that Forsen, um is going first, so he'll have the mana to be able to present the threat before the combo. And then he can generate the damage. If he, had, if he can generate the damage after he gets ahead of the combo, hypothetically, on turn 9. Oh, wait, no, no, Eloise played the Wild Growth. Okay, my apologies. Never mind, then. That's irrelevant. Okay, now, um, let's see if she Lothabs. Lothab here feels really wasteful, considering that you can't... Like, it's just that, it's just that she doesn't have a good drop, so she might... What about Big thing? Game Hunter? It's not... Yeah. I mean, do you really need to save it for Alex? You don't really... Alex? Not really. No, but... It does just die to a blizzard, you know? Time waits for no one. I think, with her hand, I think I would love it. Uh, usually I save it, but... Uh, if she had something else to play, like a Shredder, or a Belcher, or something... She's I gonna save it. Okay. I think it's fine. I think Lothab it's fine. is... It is fine either way. It's the key to, like, make sure Freeze Mage can't use a backup win condition, which is, like, stalling out a little bit. Um, it forced them to have the second Frost Nova or something, or... Yeah, but it was... I mean, if I you look, it, it was really good pressure here, because you can't... She can't Nova on turn 7, even with, you know, because Nova's 8. Yeah. So right true. now she would do... Uh, yeah. This, this, uh, BGH would actually get to... Sorry, the Shredder actually get to attack this turn, but maybe it's the Shredder's gonna have to get to attack this turn anyway because it looks like he doesn't want. It looks like he wants to Acolyte Ping or something. Yeah, he wants to draw more cards like Acolyte. Maybe he's gonna Acolyte Nova. N Nova, okay. Because if he Acolyte Pings and does a uh, Loot Hoarder, then he overdraws. She, she can make him overdraw. Overdrawing against Freeze Mage is not that great though. I think a lot of people get. Super excited because like oh he might burn Alex Straza but yeah, yeah I mean yeah. you you give him more cards and that's what they want essentially yeah micro machine all right not really gonna do too much I anticipate Ooh, ancient of lore mm -hmm. so ancient of lore generally is a really key card to winning against the uh, Freeze Mage. Like you can save it forever after the extra Like Ancient right. Lore. But here but you it, should draw. Yeah, here you definitely need to draw because your hand's weak. And she picks up the Force Nature Savage Lord. You know, I've had a lot of games against Druid where I'm dead here as a Freeze Mage. Mm -hmm. She had a pretty slow hand. She, I mean, she has two Keepers and she had a BGH that she had to drop as a minion. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, So, the priority is to set up a Force of Nature, Savage, or a kill, right? Yeah. 
I mean, you could just YOLO Drake and Innervate uh, Lothab here. You definitely start with Drake. Yeah. So, I wonder what she's I, thinking about. Mm, the Why Keeper of the Grove. The so the Keeper of the Grove and Loth. Oh, Keeper of the Grove on her own Ancient of Lords. Yeah, Yolo, she's going. She's going YOLO. This is actually more YOLO than what we said. What I said. Yeah, this is super YOLO. And uh, there is a Frost Nova, so at least that could be played. That's why that that Lothab on seven was kind of nice because Nova can't be played. The, remember the Lothab before when we were talking about it? Lothab versus mm. BGH? Okay. Well, he doesn't actually have the damage in hand to do... Yeah. Like, this should be enough to pop the ice block twice over. <laughs> um, yeah. And he also, there's a swipe to do from the hand. Wait, are we missing something that forcing can actually kill? Her and we're just not counting it correctly. No, no, he can't kill her. Okay. If he draws frost balls, he can kill her. Oh, that's right. He needs to draw frost balls. Or second ice block to stall. Yeah. Okay. Of course, your savage roar. OP, OP. Look at There's that. There's a couple of outs here for Forsen. Ice block ice number block. two is pretty good. And he can drop. Something else. You can drop a. Uh, um, oh no, he's going to do one damage off. Antonitis. Yeah, I was thinking Antonitis. But that means he only has 16 damage next turn. Yeah, yeah. He still can't and then kill next turn. Eloise would hero power out of this. Yeah, yeah. I wonder. It's possible that you um. Acolyte. Because you're just trying to get. The frost toward bolt. the frost. Bolt. Right, because if you get frost bolt, then you have six, nine. 17 damage and your opponent yeah. would be at 17. Yeah, so you I think you Nova I mean not sorry Nova doesn't matter. Yeah, you uh, ice block you acolyte and Ping your own acolyte first. Well, acolyte you ping your own acolyte, acolyte first. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah Emperor Thorson does it even allow him to do anything? I don't think so. It doesn't really change anything. I really think you acolyte here. You might not acolyte but Seems like the best. Oh, uh, okay. So he's just fireball instead of pinging his acolyte. Okay, that's I don't, fine too. The fireball there doesn't affect your mana next turn for being able to kill them. Yeah. I don't like that fireball at all. It doesn't do anything. Because if you ping their face, you're removing that one armor. If you ping their face, you're actually doing more DPS. You know, if you really want to hurt them, you mm -hmm. ping their face the next turn, you could, no matter what, you could uh, fireball with your cards you have. Even if he drew fireball off the top, second fireball, you could fireball, fireball, ice lens, ice lens is the most damage you could do. So, that fireball there, I think that was just wrong. I don't see why you do I that. I think it's somewhat inconsequential, though, generally speaking. I'm also... Oh, if you ping your own acolyte, you're getting another card. Or if you yeah, ping them... True. It ends up not getting silenced, though. What'd you say? No. Yeah, it ends up getting... If it ends up getting silenced, you're right, or Wrath, or just like something killed off, but... Generally speaking, I think you're right. Uh, you know, a little small thing where Ellie didn't put it down to 1 HP, but she still has Swipe and Keeper in the hand. Or maybe even because to do that, it makes Force and Bleed. So he might draw Frostbolt. Okay. See? He drew Fireball. Oh, Fireball is it. That allows him to Thank kill him. Well, hello. And uh, he actually ends up beating the druid player. <laughs> yeah, so see, if he, if he pinged her face last... If he pinged the face last turn instead of fireball face, he'd also kill, right? Yeah, so. but he's got the lethal. Yeah, yeah, I know. He's I know. Got but the, I didn't... I, didn't, I just... I'm trying to think... Logo? I'm just trying to think... Fireballing face last turn versus... If you want to hurt the face, then you ping the face. And if you want to go for the draws, then you ping your accolade. But I don't think fireballing face has merit. Because there's no way you draw something that you can't use the next turn with the two draws. Because if you draw Frostbolt anyway, they're dead. If you draw Fireball, you can still play it. So, yeah. so you just increase your chances to draw. I think you just increase your chances to win if, if you uh, either pink face, if you want to do damage to face. Because that's more damage. That'll be more damage. Fair enough, or you fair enough. Yeah. 
All right. Well, uh, regardless of that, the outcome is uh, speaks for itself. It's three zero up against Tempo. Three Storm. zero, dude. Tempo Storm's three getting zero. railed. And uh, Forsen's, Forsen's done for the day, so he can go back to doing whatever he usually does around dude, now. They need a. I think Tempo Storm needs the commentators to come in and play. <laughs> Yeah, what's the worst thing that could happen there? We do the exact same result as they do at, at, at worst, right? It can't yeah, get any okay. worse if we step in and play, right? <laughs> N nope. I mean, we, we, yeah, we, we, they lost all of them, so. Yeah. But um, that was rough. You know, he could have not drawn Fireball or Frostbolt, and then she would win. Um, there are some decisions here and there that could have mattered. Like, for example, Eloise didn't go for Silence on the Acolyte. Um, possibly saving it for Doomsayer. And then, you know, as a result, you could have done the same result of trying to draw on something. Like, if you Wrath for one, and then try to draw after you Silence, it does the same thing, and then you get the oh, deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, so, um, you know, okay, the previous the previous turn, Forsen had to get Ice Block or Fireball. No, for, for Ice Block or Frostball, right? Yeah. Yeah, so the he, Ice Block was a really big draw. Ice Block or Frostball already lost, so he probably had three outs, because he already mm -hmm. used one Ice Block, and he has two Frostballs, right? We probably had three outs yes. and like, you know, maybe 16 cards left or something. Mm -hmm. Maybe 15 cards, 15 cards at least. At the, so he, he, there he has 20% chance to win, or to continue mm -hmm. in the game, sorry. 20% chance to continue the game. And then he has to hit Fireball or Frostball on the next turn. <laughs> which is a, so he got, yeah. he got really lucky, actually, but um, the, the real luck was the first turn of getting the Ice Block. The second time of getting the Fireball or Frostball, he has Acolyte draw also, and yeah. he has more... Uh, yeah, so. Mm -hmm. uh, um, or he could have, I think he could have also picked up a few other things too. Maybe, I don't know, like maybe Mad Scientist to help him out to pick up a nice block or something. He, like, outside of his, he, he did have early game draws, but there's a couple of things that could have also improved his odds too. So, not out of the realm of possibility, but uh, that was a really tough matchup to win in general. Like, that's something that we yeah, played, yeah. like, Druid. Druid to win 65%, 70% of the time. Druid, Druid will win that. Uh, maybe even more than 70% of the time. More than 70% of the time. It's really hard, man. Um, to win as a freeze mage there. And he won. He won. That's right. So it's 3-0 for Forsen boys. And meanwhile, we're going to see the first appearances from Oskaka and Gara. Um, don't know what they're holding. Oh, Oskaka's holding cheesecake. Okay. And Is that cheesecake on a stick? Um, where do you get cheesecake on a stick? Sweden, I guess. Also, the sweet the the cheesecake in Sweden is old. It's not like the American cheesecake, man. It's they they probably use much healthier ingredients for you, and it's not as good. What do we use? Cream cheese? Doesn't everyone use cream cheese? I don't know, but it was very it was very like um watery. Have you like, ever baked a cheesecake? No, I haven't. You know, I just I'm eat not, cheesecake. I don't bake right, it. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, I, think there, I think like two bars of che cream cheese go into there. Really? Like, yeah, two in full bars, I think. In a regular in, cheesecake. Like a in New one cheesecake. regular cheesecake. Yeah. I don't know, Any but cheese. I just remember the texture was not what I anticipated. And it wasn't as sweet as I thought it should have been. It was very, you know, bland. Man. I'm not, I'm not hating on the European cheesecake. They probably love it, but America's cheesecake is better. Just straight up. Yeah. Shots fired. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so we get to see Gara finally. Um, Hunter vs. Warrior. Um, who's, not who's necessarily who? really liking Hunter's chances here either. Oh, man. Okay, it depends though. If he runs high main. Then, That's right. Uh, but I feel like Gara would play face Hunter. He always complains about how good face Hunter is. So it, it wouldn't surprise me. Oh, Hunter's Mark. That heavily implies it's mid range then. Maybe he's talking about in the context of ladder of how good face hunter is. So, uh, you know, is the high main tr rule true against a warrior? Like, if you hit them one time with the high main of the face, do you win? Uh, duh, I don't. Not always, considering that they they have one of the best ways to deal with high main because they have really cheap removal and they have armor smith to gain back. No, no, but I said if you actually get to hit them in the face with the high main. Yeah, it's not always true. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. But I would say generally it's pretty true because it, if you can, it's like saying. Oh, he has Death Lord in his hunter deck. This uh, guy's crazy. No, 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 I saw this earlier this week, um, in the Vulcan League, I believe. No, this guy's crazy. 
No, I saw it. He's not the first to do it. Okay, okay. He's I not guess, the first to do it. But Gar will probably warrior, say he's the first to do it. It's actually so he's the bad against the warrior. It's crazy. Just gets executed. Yeah, and then Ragnaros comes out. Yeah, but it is Grand Patron Warrior, so I guess Ragnaros isn't coming out. Okay. But, oh, it's even bad. Okay, it's really bad against Patron. You know, when they war song Patron, you get three Patrons off it. Oh, yeah, it's true. Two, two attack is so bad. What if you can buff it, though, with um, Glaive Zuka? Come on. But I don't even okay, know. So he's going to set up Death Lord with Glaive Zuka? I don't know. <laughs> he has Death Lord in his deck. Anything is up for grabs at this point. Don't judge me. Man. I... Okay, if Gara wins this, I'll be really impressed. So last, last match I said if Forsen wins, I'll be really impressed. Because it's really hard to win against... Mm -hmm. Thing. I'm not actually that impressed because, you know, it came down to getting the right draws at the right time, but... Oh, yeah, let's say I'm impressed. I'm impressed by the RG. And now... Oh, I probably yeah, sound like yeah, a Forsen yeah, yeah. hater. I just happen to be hating. Yeah, because, but you know, whoever whoever w wins, I like to hate on them because they always got good RNG, right? Uh, Pretty much. I, that's how Hearthstone yeah, works. I, I so, guess that's one way to look at it. I, I would say both players um, have had luck, and then one player loses, unfortunately, in, in yeah. this series. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Sorry, hey, anyone who's a Forsen boy in the chat, I'm not a Forsen hater at all. He's cool. I just, uh, you know, if he lost, I'd be like, oh, damn, she got lucky. You know, it's just like, <laughs> it's just how it is. No uh, worries, man. You've already uh, incurred the wrath of the Force and Boys, I think. Oh, really? I haven't been reading the chat. I don't have it open. It's okay. I don't, I'm not reading it either. We're on a delay, so it'll be a while before they hear this. Now you told them we're on a delay. It makes it less exciting. We're only on a, like a 10 minute delay, I think. It's actually pre recorded, guys, the entire time. Wow. This is like eight years delayed. Yeah, we recorded this in 2014. Blizzard gave us the, the expansion cards before you guys. Eight years ago was longer than... Two, 2014 was, was just last year, I think. But yeah, yeah, let's say that. Man, look look at this Death Lord just owning, you know? Yeah, well, it's... It's sitting there doing stuff. It's owning. It took a Fiery War Axe charge like a boss. So do you... Owl? Do you Hunter's Mark? I mean, Owling trap? draw is just so important, I think. Like, draw for a combo deck is the linchpin to success, I think. Yeah, yeah. I like... You also might... Mm. If you Owl, you're getting a beast down for Hound Master. That's why I like it. Oh, oh, so he's playing for tempo. Just YOLO Hound Master. Wow. This is something that Gara would... Probably want to talk about for a long time in our in our team chat. I hate when he talks about something. Like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm the only player. I'm the only player like... that would would Houndmaster there. Like everyone else, is is so shit. Like <laughs> <laughs> ten out of ten. No, that was really good. That was really yeah. good. <laughs> no, because he, he'd be like, you know, if you play Owl, then you know it's probably gonna die, so I won't get the Houndmaster because they're gonna use Whirlwind. And, and, yeah. But the thing is, uh. You know, he doesn't really just say, like, oh, I think that was the right play. He, like, goes on for maybe, like, 10 to 15 minutes about every other possible play and how no one really else would make that play. But most yeah. importantly, that it was the right play, and if he would play it again, he'd do the same exact thing. Yeah. Oh, getting Leoc there was a good play, too. Oh, look, now Death Lord not so bad against patrons. But let's be real, too. This is a lot of damage. That Hound Master... No, getting Leoc there was a good play, too, because... Um, it did three damage. Huffer would have done four. So it did one less damage, but Leoc doesn't die to the axe spinning and the whirlwind. Yeah. Combined. This so. Death Lord is actually doing some pretty good work, by the way. We we kind of joked about it, but it's done seven damage so far. Yeah. 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 Where and is getting a little bit of That was Huffer. The warrior had an easy full clear, and since it's Leoc, it's a little harder. And even mm -hmm. if it was Misha, the warrior could melee it. But since Leoc was by far the best one, usually that's not true. Weird. Yeah. Huh? Uh, Look, if, if that's a Misha, you melee block. it, everything's dead. If that's a dead. Huffer, it's dead to Whirlwind. Mm -hmm. Now you have to take a little bit more damage. Do you drop the Armorsmith here too? So like you Whirlwind first and then Armorsmith, or you Armorsmith then Whirlwind? Oh, yeah. Gaining life's pretty important. Yeah. Oh, we forget that the Death Lord also pulls a minion now. Yeah, let's see what we get. It'd be cool if it was Grow or something. You can you can melee and you get two armor. Yep. And that means you're at nine. 
Warrior's looking good now. Yeah. Uh, on turn six. Wow. <laughs> pretty sure that's a good play. Yeah, it's pretty nice. excellent. Consider Dude, that. Can... That's so funny. The best play that we as he did not react. Oh, another Armorsmith though. Neither player react because they both. Okay, people might not know this, but Oskaka also he he's really a passionate player. Like, if he loses, he hates losing. He also like takes victories and defeats like really personal too so he's a guy that like he if he gets unlucky he'll get pretty pissed i think he really needs an execute here to deal with the high main you got oh, it there we go and he could second armor smith yeah that's huge yeah now he's just getting so much life um, oh to second armor smith and then he can Ooh. kill one of the two now yeah, there's a reaction from gara he's pissed <laughs> Now he more. points out the uh, unstable goal for more. Yeah. The guard has um, out on that and uh, unleash, but it's not really that great. Yeah. Maybe he gets, uh, Second Hunter's Mark. Yeah. Um. Uh, it's gross. Yeah, I'm not really sure what that second hardest mark is going to do here. If you if you silence the unstable ghoul, you can get past and do damage, but um, the armor will start putting it out of range. So you want to like silence the armor smith. Okay, so he's outlining the unstable ghoul because he started with unleash. Mm -hmm. He's hunters mark the armor smith and kill it. Yeah, that's the best play. Mm -hmm. Oh! What the fuck? Was that just a misclick? Yeah, oh. that was certainly... He meant to click face, right? Oh, that's actually really annoying. He lost the dog, and he gave the guy one armor for yeah. no reason. Yeah, that was actually a really uh, unfortunate misclick there from Gara. Wait, maybe it wasn't a misclick because he ended up killing it, but maybe he just changed his mind fast. Maybe it just uh, he uh, went in the wrong order. No, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, either way. I really just, thought he went in the wrong order. Wrong. So <laughs> natural to kill Armorsmiths first after you play a lot of Hearthstone. That right. I, I think it was a misclick. Well, either way, this is still a really difficult spot. Yep. Kill Command makes it a little easier to deal with, though. I would think. There still it puts you within range. Well, he's deciding if he wants to Kill Command face or Kill Command the Grim Patient. Oh man, I don't really like either. I wonder. I, just because there's you're still pretty far away. But yeah, you're relying on top decking what if you kill command face because you can't. Second you need kill. quick shot pretty much. Yeah, it is quick shot. If you kill you command, can't get a beast and kill command next turn. Your beast are all gonna be dead. Well, if you play freezing trap, you're gonna bounce back the. Unstable ghoul, right? And then the the high main, or not the high main, the grim patron would start cleaning up the two ones. So you can hypothetically hold on to this kill command, but I still think it might be better to use it now. Yeah, he's gonna use it. Hmm. And he just used it on the patron. That unstable ghoul is just gonna AFK. Uh, yeah. He's just gonna drop another patron, repeat scenario, and armor up. That's what I would do. Do you think he wants to use inner rage here for battle rage? Um, th doesn't really matter. I don't think it matters too much what he does as long as he presses armor up. Grim patron armor up looks good. The only top deck that could f screw you over, that the only top deck that the hunter has any chance of winning is a quick shot. Right, because you top deck kill command doesn't even matter. Yeah, I would, I would think so. Because even like the second high main, there's no guarantee. No, he doesn't AFK with this. I'm really surprised. He's gonna that. replay it. Is he just gonna replay it? Yeah, so. that's a way much worse turn than just AFK. But that's fine. He's still the hunter can't win pretty much. Was he concerned about um, 
Now, like the quick eagle shot hornbill. into kill command is a win, but no, he didn't get it. Quick shot into kill command was exact lethal. Oh, yeah. you're right. We've been ten damage. It gave him a tiny chance. That's such a small chance. If he runs quick shot, first of all, if he runs two quick shots, let's say, I don't know how many cards he has left, but it would be you know one out of fifteen to draw it exactly quick shot, and then one out of fourteen to draw exactly the second kill command. Yeah, well, 18. Or quick shot again. <laughs> there's like, there's really low chance for that yeah, to even yeah. happen. Yeah. The thing is, uh. It's 15 and 15 is one out of 225. You know, it's about 15 draws left. Well, Skaka as it, it actually hasn't been armoring up the past couple of turns either, so he's he's at lower life than, you know, than I'm comfortable looking at personally. 8 HP is still really low, like for quick shot play. Just quick shot into bow, you know, into hero. Might not even run quick shot. Because it's. I mean, you don't get to use your quick shots often when you have high main in your deck. It's funny that some people don't run quick shot because it just shows how weird Hunter is. Because it's it's like just dark bomb and extra draw card sometimes. It seems like such a good card, mm -hmm. but it still not, doesn't make the cut sometimes over some YOLO card. Oh man, and if he quick shots, he might have to consider quick shotting the uh, Frothing Berserker because he's just going to die. He, he lost. It's over. Uh, I think Warrior can't kill him this turn, but then there is the chance of quick shot magic the next turn. Oh, uh, okay. I think he's dead. You know, no, there certainly almost dies, right? Because there's just way too much. You can push in like. Um... Oh wait, no, 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 no. He doesn't have the mana. You can't get to... through the. You can't. Well, you can't get your frothing hit phase this turn. You can if you draw something off the acolyte. I was thinking if you could play um, the drag corsair for cheap, but you can't. Hmm. Again, it doesn't really matter what he does. Even quick shot top deck, you can't lose. What if you're wrong? What if you're wrong in uh, quick? Um, I guess if I'm wrong. Shot. I will give everybody in the chat five dollars. That's gonna. Oh, be it's okay. Let me see how many people are in the chat. First of all, because you're about to lose a lot of money if that's the case. I don't think you're ready to part ways with uh, 200k bones. Oh man! All right, that's insane. <laughs> It'd be the most magical comeback ever, don't you think? The quick shots. Quick shot into what? Man. Doesn't matter. Quick shot into quick shot into. Uh. Bow. Into hero power. Quick shot into quick shot could actually win. There's a, that tiny chance. Yes. Yeah, so quick shot into quick shot into damage and. Quick shot into I think he doesn't even run quick shot. So. <laughs> then it has to be quick shot into quick shot into damage. Yeah. Yeah. There, was a, there was a remote possibility that uh, Wreckful was about to so, let's say, pay everybody five bucks. Yeah. Very small chance. Yeah. I think, Dude, I think those chances, man. I, I have lost. Boys. You know, I've taken some chances in my life. I, I, mm -hmm. I've had a really bad day on the stock market before. You know? Yeah. Life you've happens. had ups and downs. I don't know if you've had a bad day in the stock market compared to the bad day Tempo Storm's having, though. This is pretty bad. No, my day was pretty bad. So people in the chat might know about it. But I mean, I've had enough good days to make up for it. But it took like several good days to add up to that one bad day. It was a really bad day. But, uh, anyway, Tempo Storm's having a bad day. Yeah. What if Tempo Storm doesn't win an entire game? Well, here's then, the then thing. they can equally blame each other. They'd be like, well, I lost a few games. You lost here's a few Here's the thing, games. I think. Um, we should play for them. Yeah, I think we need to call in a substitution yep. at this point. I mean, Gara's just bad. <laughs> no, but you know what? If the if the other guy didn't draw execute for his high main, Gara was chilling. It seemed like, cause look look how close it was already. Yeah, that's how the cookie crumbles. Yeah, I think so. I mean, this is where like panic starts to settle in. It's like, well, we we knew we can take our time. It's a best of eleven. But I think but hype we... comes in with Rogue right now. Watch against Druid and Hunter. That's a, actually, those are really uh, bad matchups. Yeah. I wouldn't... Mm, 
Okay, well, how about Druid this? I want to flip the scenario. What if... You play against Druid and Hunter, because Warlock's good against Druid, but bad against Hunter, probably. Maybe Warlock's, Warlock's not bad against Hunter. Warlock is pretty good. Every yeah, Warlock's pretty enough. good against Druid and Hunter. Every Warlock's pretty good against Druid. Yeah, Warlock would be okay, too. It's reasonable, but I think the Hunter has the advantage, for sure. Especially because you know it's Chalky, and you'll probably play Face Hunter. If you know it's Face Hunter... Can you beat it? Can you imagine though if you're up five zero and you just lose six straight for your team? That'd be sweet. Like that's like the only way. I think that's, that's Wait, like if you're losing sweet. over and over, does the same guy have to play that deck or no? You said someone yeah. else plays the same deck. Yeah. So say like Oskaka wins the lose Druid. twice. Someone else plays that deck for you. Yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. If you lose, you just keep playing, no matter what, I think. If you're the last player. There's no bench Wait, goal. Wait, 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 wait. Really? Yeah. So someone can actually lose six in a row? Yeah. Oh, that's Hypothetically awesome. Hypothetically speaking. That is pretty awesome, I but the worst it's, thing uh, ever. it'd be, like, the most demoralizing thing for Chaki or Oskaka if that was the case. Like, say Chaki wins here and Oskaka has to 6-0 a Druid, but Druid just keeps losing over and over and over and over and over. Now, that would be a series of the ages, I think. If it's, like... To go zero six. No one's ever gone zero six before, like consecutively. They've gone zero six in groups, like maybe lose zero three, zero three. Yeah. Oh, something we forgot to mention before too was that uh, the reason why Gara had to switch in there was that Eloise got benched for losing two in a row, and if Gara loses two in a row here, he's gonna get benched. And if Hype loses, then maybe Raynad will bench everybody and put him, me, and Rexal into the next tournament <laughs> for the next series. That'll be the ultimate chase. All right, oh, Hunter versus I, I Hunter. This, 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 hmm? I wasn't watching. Did it start? Oh no, it didn't start. Yeah, okay. it's, it's Hunter versus Hunter. Remember, Gara has the Death Lords. That's uh, his choice here. Okay. Job's done. And Jockey's got the Glaive Zuka, but he's got the Houndmaster, so maybe it looks like he's playing hy hybrid ish. Every Houndmaster deck has high main, right? Uh, I would assume so. I I'd be very surprised if hi Houndmaster was the most expensive card in his deck. Yeah. Because the I reason why Houndmaster is so good. I haven't seen a Houndmaster deck without a high main. Yeah. Thing. It's so good against the high with the high main and after high main when the hyenas, hyenas spawn. I, this is kind of, you know, I haven't seen mid-range versus mid-range hunter almost ever. It's usually one hunter's face, at least, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's become really interesting, for sure. Yeah. Gar has a couple of choices here, too. He could set up Death Lord. He could set up Animal Companion. <laughs> he also could have set up, like, a two-drop to line into it. I didn't Misha... mind the I mean, Misha's not not bad because his opponent has bow and can answer whatever companion comes out. Yeah. Guess you just. Mm, what also really stinks is that you want to get a Houndmaster off, but you do have the Pilot Shredder next turn. If you didn't have the Pilot Shredder, then maybe it changed the play. But I think now you have to kill it off here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pilot Shredder's looking good next turn. Um, Death Lord. Nice. Yeah. Now you get. To, now he has to go through it because you can play Snake Trap. Now Shredder and AFK. Well, even if he can play Snake Trap, the other guy picks up Unleash. That's fine. But that's true. He has not picked it up yet. Every time, every time you Snake Trap, you get Unleashed, man. <laughs> yeah, it's quite unfortunate. It just feels like whenever you play Hunter cards, your opposing Hunter has the perfect counter to it. Got Hunters. Nobody the likes The best them. counter to Hunter is Hunter, man. Let's see, Mad Scientist comes into the hand here. Maybe he wants to capitalize on the Snake Trap now. Snake Trap plus Haunted Creeper means a lot of tiny board presence. And the big priority for Gara is to set up a really strong board preemptively before high main. So that way he can combat it as best as he can. Mm -hmm. And if Chucky is aware of it, he knows that this should be explosive. 
or snake trap because that would be the worst freezing trap in the world to set up. You'd rather hero power with the mad scientist. Yeah. So he, might even assume, he might even assume Snake. I mean, if you're looking at a Death Lord. That's true. If you're looking at a Death Lord and you know it's not freezing. Yeah, that's but a really good point. We did see Snipe the other day. Snipe also making a, an appearance here and there. I wonder. It's not bad against the Azure Drakes and the Grim Patrons. Oh, question. Snipe doesn't hit Animal Companion, right? No, no. It's only something that played like a minion yeah, yeah, yeah. from the Yeah, I was just making sure. Animal Companion's technically a spell, which is why... Yeah, know, it, it gets counter spell. Mm -hmm. What if this Death Lord pulls a high main, though? That'll be really bad for Gara. I like the no fear of freezing trap at all, like you said. Mm -hmm. Technically, shutter first. Yep. And... No. Cool, the worst thing ever. Yeah, it's pretty average. Or like, actually, no, it's not actually the worst thing ever in a mid. What can it pull that's worse than that? Uh, worse than the abusive. I can't I pull something worse. Web spinners. I guess at least I would have been pull out a card. Yeah, I guess it is probably the worst. Yeah. So now Gara has a couple of two drops here. I think he's looking to silence the Pilot Shredder and then maybe kill off Leok with those Mad Scientist. What does he get off the trap? Mm, if it's Freezing Trap, then the Abusive Sergeant ends up being an okay Death Lord thing. Can you imagine oh, that? Quickly. Yeah. If it's Explosive Trap, Gara actually has a really good opportunity here to seize back the board pre-high pre main. Mm -hmm. We don't know what trap it is though, so we'll go ahead and- Oh, it is freezing, freezing trap. trap. Oh, and the Abusive Sergeant ends up working out great. Yeah, Look yeah. Look at that! <laughs> Crazy series of events to make that a good. <laughs> <laughs> like normally it's supposed to be the worst outcome ever, but it ends up being probably the the, the best outcome. No, you get a high man, you just freeze your shredder and then you win. Well, relative to the freezing trap yeah. being returned back to the hand. You don't want I mean the shredder still stays on board and it's four damage. Yeah, right? but the high man would stay on the board. That's better. Okay, fine. So one of the yeah. best scenarios. Yeah, yeah, one of the best. One of the best. Sorry for nitpicking. Yeah, yeah. I actually hate nitpicking people who nitpick. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> you were like the best one, so I was Jerk. like, eh. Let fine. me shut him down for no reason. No worries. I, I cast it the crib. He does the same thing. So this is twelve. Oh yeah, he 14, really does that. Sixteen. Yeah. He nitpicks so hard you cannot use any words that are you know the best, worst. Yeah. Ever. <laughs> Gotta stay away from this. Gotta be careful. That's why we love him. Oh. Um, we, we got a, a good opportunity here for Chucky to just continue to press. And this is looking like, uh, unless Gar picks Unleash the Hounds, this is looking like another victory for the Force and Boys. And I think yeah, Unleash the, the, is the, the only six card. Dream, the 6 0 Dream is very close to being real. Unleash the Hounds is the only card to get around that. If you Boom, have Unleash the Hounds, it. he's locked. You freeze one hound, you drop it again, probably, and you could use yep. it to kill the owl and the Ooh. shredder. Force and boys are, are on a path to to emote the most out of any team in the team league. Oh my god, dude. And they're 5 0. -oh. So, I mean, at least they're backing up their emotes. And, you know, to be fair, they're also emoting when they guaranteed win. They're not emoting uh, before the win's guaranteed. Because then that'd be embarrassing if, uh, you know, they, they emote a bunch. All right, so Oskaka has to go for the 6-0 here. Everybody's won their games that they played on Force and Boys, and Gar is now benched, which means uh, either Hyped or Eloise has to play. And now, if I were to guess, Eloise might just bring out the Warlock. Or Hyped can bring out the Rogue. And Oskaka, which means Cheesecake, apparently he was holding a fork, not a stick. So it's a fork with cheesecake on it? Uh, yeah. Or, uh, I, I think so. Cheesecake on a stick sounded so much cooler. It was. It sounds like a legitimate product that you could sell to kids, uh, 
you know, in a truck. Cheesecake on a stick. Can we just see the next game already? Wait, is this the only thing we're casting today? No, we're casting this in one more match. There's a Celestial versus Team Liquid, which probably be closer than this match. Who's Celestial? But, I mean, don't give up, don't give up hope. Maybe Hype the reverse sweep. Can you imagine oh, yeah, yeah. the mental destruction that would happen if Oskaka just lost six in a row? Yeah, you'd, you'd have to eat a lot of cheesecake to get over that. <laughs> He's not a college white student. Like, where do you? Like, well, that's Wait, what we so, do uh, in America. Who, who's the, who's Celestial? Who, who's that? Celestial is like uh, Tiddler and Silent Storm, Frozen Ice, like oh, like really good Chinese players football? in Asia. Yeah, really good players in Asia. Um, and Silent Storm also lives in Canada, but he came, he's like a immigrant, I believe. His family immigrated to Canada, so he still primarily speaks like Chinese really well, and English isn't one of his strongest languages. Mm -hmm. um, so Silent Storm really like is good at Chinese, so he talks to them there. And even though he lives in Canada, he's a uh, really good representative, I think, for like half Asia, half North America. Mm -hmm. um, in the meantime, we have Hype versus uh, Oskaka. This is potentially the last game of the series, guys. This was a lot quicker than I thought it would be. Um, but I guess if you're looking at Force and Boys, a few of the fans were even tweeting saying, are Force and Boys even the favorites of the tournament? Force and managed to get two really good teammates. Uh, and the best part is he didn't even have to get in the signed contracts under his team. They're just playing under the Force and Boys. Borrowing the energy of the, the ace players from Root and Dignitas. Because mm. those are the best players from other teams. Uh, from mm -hmm. those teams, I think. Oh, shots no fired disrespect. at everyone else on those no, teams. No disrespect to, you know, Green Sheep and Blackout and uh, Era. Those guys on those other teams. Well, I, I would sucks. have to say that the best team. You heard it here. Frodan. Mm-hmm. That's mean. Can I see this game already? Oh, okay, I can see this game. Here we go. Yeah. By the way, I think Bro. Hype has to play because the other two players have been benched. Like, this is like uh, okay. Rogue? out of necessity. <laughs> Rogue versus Druid is pretty interesting. Would you say it favors the Druid a little bit? Uh, I would actually say it's good for Rogue now that Druids have focused less to, against anti-spell tech. People used to play, you know, no Spectre Knights, remember? And that was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rogue, Rogue could do nothing against that. Nowadays, I feel like Rogue is really well equipped because um, it's really good at seizing tempo from Druid. Really, really good with preparation. You start with Coin and, and Backstab and 2SI Agents and Thalnos is pretty good too. But Coin, yeah. coin with... Uh, I guess I guess Coin SI doesn't find a target against Druid though. So. Uh, not really, other than usually Shredders if you can do something really weak. Like if they have something weak pop out, the SI can clean up. Um, but it's not looking like... Drew has a slow Ruger hand unless hand. he draws wild growth next turn. Okay. Let's see what happens. Oh, no. he's not that skilled. You said this guy was good? He's he's the best player on Root. Does, or, have, you know, maybe even... I'm looking right doesn't... now. I'm looking right now. He doesn't have wild growth in his hand. Yeah, he's, he still has another turn to draw it. Oh, okay. Because if you think about it, if he drew... If he drew it this turn... I mean, sure, he would have played it now, of course, but he wouldn't want to just play Keeper to the face, even though that's probably what he'd end up doing. So right, if he right, draws right. a Wild Growth next turn, he gets a Well, actually, they can play better in the long run. Yeah. Okay. Well, he missed it okay. again? Well, I, not I'm not good. so sure. I'm not so sure about this game, guys. Wow. He's given a lot of time to Rogue, but at the same time, Rogue needs those four drops. Um, he needs the Pilot Shredders. Shredder, he needs or, uh, the teacher. Teachers. He needs something because those four drops are the anchor for Rogue to do damage and then make sure their spells have uh, maximum potency. So here you just drop an SI. This guy's yep. toast. And uh, it looks like it's going to get Wrath. The best draw would have been Wild Growth still because you can Wrath and Wild Growth. Mm -hmm. That's unfortunate for Oskaka. Just one turn off and dropping Shade on Curve. Yeah. If he did shade, I wonder if hype would down those flurry. Hmm. Oh, that would actually be something you could consider, but the danger of that is uh, then you lose your blade flurry. And yeah, of you course, have, there's a danger to it, but I think you he have might oil do. in hand. It would definitely be like a hyped type play, though. It'd be like something that 
he would make that people normally be like, yeah, I'm not so sure. Maybe I'll just like. Yeah, sometimes those play. fancy plays are not what you want to do, but. Mm -hmm. um, tempo super important as a rogue. So it's, can be, yeah, can absolutely. Be I mean, this matchup is heavily dependent on tempo. Dude, Tempo Storm. Wait, this is the one that Tempo <laughs> Storm's gonna win. You said that in such like a stoner voice. <laughs> Dude, uh. Tempo Storm, bro. It's like you like bring the tempo and it's like in a storm. Is he thinking about he bounced over oil? Maybe he's gonna coin a thing for oil. And coin just, nothing. Uh, Wouldn't you and rather just, backstab for oil? Well, I guess yeah. You know. I, I mean, it looks like you just, if you backstab SI that thing, you're getting swiped. Yeah. Now you okay, can just Thal down those backstab and um, melee it and read dagger. You can mm -hmm. Thalnos backstab, melee it, read dagger. Or you could coin nothing oil. But that coin's pretty good for your sprint on turn six. So. Yeah, I'd say so. You have, you need to use this coin because there's a lot of important spells. Not to mention that, um, you know, if you need, if you use backstab now, you need a good activator for SI the next turn so it gives you six mana to play with. Okay, so you did the Thalnos backstab redagger. Yeah. And now, Rogue's in a pretty okay spot. Probably gonna um, have Shredder. I mean, we're gonna have a Shade and and Hero Power from the other dude. And then oh, we might have shade is so risky because of fan of knives. Yep. So oh, but you have nothing to drop. So maybe he swipes face, but or maybe he wraths for one. Wrath for one, maybe. melee one of them, or you shade and melee one of them. I think you shade and you hero power down the Thanos. Um, you have swipe to pick up the SI seven agent as damage, um, yeah, like yeah. you know AOE damage, and I think the denying on the fan of knives is more important. Even though you do want to take out the thing that has more damage, so you can take less over time. I, I completely agree in normal circumstances. Yeah, yeah. losing the shit. Yeah, Filling the Thalnos here is better. For sure. Even not knowing the guy's hand. Now, the question would be if he wraths. He's doing the wrath for one. Yeah. His hand is really awkward still. Oh, we wrath still on the shade. Okay. Oh, so he, he didn't agree with you on the Thalnos being more important to kill. Okay. Now... Cool. I, um... You could melee face Flurry for two and drop SI on face, you know. You could also oil. You could coin oil Flurry, but then you give up your coin. That would suck. You don't, you don't actually want so to use your Flurry if you're using your oil. I think. I mean, it's just it's a lot of face damage, but you don't want to do that. I think. It's 9 damage now, plus 4, 13. You put him at 16, and you have sure. a 4-1. You've almost guaranteed force him the hero power. He just used Wrath for 1-2. Actually, I'm not, I'm not opposed to that play. I'm not opposed. It's not terrible. Because you still have Sap and SI7 agent for, like, more tempo if he tries to put a taunt in its way. Okay. I didn't, I didn't like it that much, because... I mean, the oil flurry is pretty crazy. It is pretty crazy considering that blade flurry is like one of your keys to make sure you swing against druid guaranteed. It's perfectly reasonable to um, to hold on to these these type of resources. Harrison plus, Jones is a plus really you're be using your coin and then you play next turn. Sud like suddenly your go to coin sprint if you had nothing to do is gone. It's true. So you're you're sitting there true. with an SI and sap. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Okay, so now... Prep. Okay, so he might start with Prep Sprint. Or here... Oh, wow. He drew that. Oh, my gosh. You could you could do Deadly, Prep, Oil, Flurry, or... No, you don't have to Prep, sorry. You just Coin. Deadly, Oil, Coin, Flurry. It's pretty good. How much damage is that? It's 3 plus 12... So that's 15. Oh, nope. Uh, you 18. can go with a completely different route and just prep sprint. And then you, if you completely miss draws, you coin SI. You SI the Emperor probably and trade in your 3-3. Three, three, or you SI the Shade and ignore the Emperor, but ignoring Emperor sucks. Yeah, you don't want to ignore the Emperor at all. So I think um, you SI, you prep, you can prep sprint, SI the Emperor, kill it with your uh, heal buff. Or... Yeah, but then you leave the shade. 
You can also deadly poison. Um, okay, he's doing. He's doing it. Okay. He's going in. He's going ham. Yeah, he's going completely ham. But uh, he's he's even doing the SA. Yeah, I'm going super aggressive, and he's got a sprint next turn, right? I like that yellow. I like it. I just like being able to put Druid under a lot of pressure. That's the Not first play we. That's the first play we thought about, and. <laughs> That, you don't have to it. justify it. But, um... Well, this is awkward now. You gotta swipe. And you don't even have a Harrison Jones to... To, like... Steal anything off of. You... Can't do anything. You, you, <laughs> you can, can swipe. He might swipe twice. Or he might uh, swipe Harrison. They're both really bad. Yeah, I think swipe Harrison... Does is like you don't you're not gonna really need cards at this point, right? So isn't board prisons really good? Yeah, yeah. But I guess the second swipe also means that your opponent doesn't have to generate four damage. If you swipe twice, he has to generate he hasn't eight. Damage. Used yet, so you might swipe yeah. twice. Yeah. Okay, now hype just gets to sit here and sprint. Yeah. Doesn't want to eight health. It's perfect. Then. Oh, shredder. Oh, nope, shredder is better. That used to be his deck name, I think. Shredder, Shredder is better? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Great minds think alike. I'm basically hyped. Wow. As good as him. Mm -hmm. So... Just because I thought of that name. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you win this game? Uh, if you're the Druid player, you have to hope that the Shredder drops something relatively innocuous. Or you can, like, because so, you can heal right now with the... The only way you're... Right? Well, but you're saying you're killing it with either Force of Nature or Rag? Oh, I thought you were like going to heal. I thought you were going to heal right now because you're just <laughs> floundering. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I thought you were just talking about killing the Shredder. So, oh, yeah. I'm saying, like, you, you need yeah, yeah, it yeah. to... Sorry, I was, thinking, I was thinking two steps ahead. So you have to heal yourself, and then when you kill the Shredder, it has to have something relatively innocuous. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The... Maybe maybe the more maybe the play that wins this game when you're losing this hard is Rag. Rag kills Shredder. Or Doctor Boom. Yeah, he went with a similar thing. If you Rag and it kills a Shredder and he gets me yeah. really shit. But well, Rag he's really hoping. Step. He's hoping that his opponent can't deal with it and then he combos for the win. But that's really idealistic. Super idealistic. Okay. You can stab Dr. Boom and just push face, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. hit the face. You sap it. Sapping Dr. Boom is not. Doesn't usually, feel that good, but in this situation, you know, it's fine. It's totally fine. Would you bother that? taking out one of the 1 1 bombs, or would you just hit the face? I think you kill one. So they're really good with Savage Roar. He hasn't used one yet. Okay, hit the face. It's fine. Yeah, hit the face is okay because the he's gonna most likely want a hero power and, and if sprint into power, if this kills. Yes. But also okay. You, well, you for sure are playing Savage Roar, and you're gonna kill this. Th try to kill the stuff, what? and then you're gonna heal yourself with lore. I think. Does the the trigger on the death rattle happens first onto the shredder? So if the boom bots collide into the shredder, uh, it'll happen so that it could kill off the minion first. Okay, so you just comboed. Yeah, twenty damage, but not enough. Just short. Uh, works out pretty well. I don't. So we can kill it off. Now it's basically left up to hype to generate a few points. Of yeah, he's just gonna sprint and get a vis. He's gonna draw five cards this turn. This draw, four more cards. He hasn't used one of this yet. Yeah, there's a really high chance that he just picks up some type of lethal. He still has a prep too, so I think a vis is actually oil's no the good only though. Prep oil is one mana. He's one mana short to sprint prep oil. Yeah, actually, now that I think about it, Sprint is the only, like, Eviscerate's the only thing you could draw, so it's safer yeah. to actually, man. Oh man, he took 7 damage from the 
from that. He hypothetically could die to a second combo. But we know that there is none. Oskaka still needs a little bit of help here. Whoa. Well, um... He could either try to heal himself with the Ancient of Lore, or he can set up a taunt. But I think you first want to uh, Wild Growth to see if you can improve your odds, right? Mm -hmm. Although I guess if you Wild Growth and you can't Hero Power, like say you um, you might die to a few other things because uh, you don't gain that one health. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can even Harrison Jones and then Drew of the Claw. Hmm. Kind of does the same thing anyways. No, but then if you Harrison Jones and you draw into something you need to play, like Wrath, then you can't use that and the Druid of the Claw. So yeah. I think the... Mm. Okay, let's see. Okay, not helpful. Okay, he can... If he, he can sprint into lethal really easily. Yes. It's... it's Even now that he didn't draw sprint... Uh, yes. Even now that he did not draw this yet, he has about 50% chance to draw this. Yes. Uh, he can have Sap. He can have Viscerate. Okay, Viscerate came out as the first option. And he did draw another option. So, uh, that's going to do it for game six. And Tempo Storm gets their first win. Okay, so hy Hype's all right, like looking okay. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. got one win on the board. Yeah, we're not completely blowing it here. Um, but you have to kind of be worried because how much can they keep this up? That's six games that you have to hope Druid doesn't draw wild growth. It's going to happen. <laughs> well, you could lose with wild growth, though. That's true. I mean, that the Druid, true. Druid could lose to wild growth to zoo with wild growth for sure. Uh, could lose to like that face pally thing for sure. Uh, we haven't seen the pally deck yet, though, from Tempest Storm. Um, I wonder what his his chance to win actually was off the sprint. I, I think okay. I think he started the turn with fourteen cards left, and he was drawing five cards that turn, mm -hmm. and two of them were sprint. What would you guess the chances? He, he could get oh, a gotten God, sap. Sounds like an SAT problem. <clears throat> um, above yeah, yeah. zero percent. That's right. Yeah, it is above zero percent. Thank you, thank you. Partial credit. Partial credit. You're pretty good. <laughs> That's how I got by in school. I argue with partial credit on every problem. Hmm. It's hard when it's two. You can get two different cards. Yeah, but I mean, there was. He also could have picked up prep to help him too, right? Because yeah, you can get prep, prep. You can get a lot of uh, uh, Well, in that situation, you can get this. You can get sap. You can get prep. With oil, prep oil kills it. Because he had yeah. ten mana. So, so for example, he oil. also picked up deadly poison and blade flurry. So what he could have done was. If you got prep in one of those combinations, you could have uh, attacked yeah, yeah. with a dagger and the prep blade for something. I don't know. All right, so uh, I think the Warlock will be coming out here for Eloise. I think Warlock's pretty good against Druid. Um, I also assume that it's going to be... Wait, it's not... Oh, it's not Hype playing? Oh, no, no. Uh, now that Hype won, Gara and Os Oskaka can play. Although, actually, I wouldn't mind Gara bringing out the mid-range Hunter... I'm not sure how good. I think you called Eloise Oskaka. No, 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 I'm saying uh, Eloise would bring out the Warlock here against. The oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard, okay, I heard that. But yeah, I would, just, I would also think that maybe this Hunter would be okay against Druid because it does have high mains. It's got two Hunters marks, so it can grab insane tempo, like two Hunters marks and two Freezing Traps against Druid. That's like that's just so hard to come back from if you ever get a high main down successfully. Mm-hmm. The really hard core part is whether or not Hype can win Warrior versus Druid. Mm -hmm. And uh, as the as you might um, have already seen the beginning of the show, but people might not know if they're coming in late, the score does matter in the series. So you don't want to you want to maximize as many chances as you can to win for this tiebreaker scores in case yeah, you so don't. Yeah, Warlock win the first then. Yeah, Warlock first. Warlock's for sure the best against Druid. Huh? Then Hunter. Then I'd probably go with Paladin if it's a mid-range Paladin. Then I'd go with Druid and, and then Warrior. That's probably the order I'd, I'd go in, but it yeah. could be whatever they decide. Yeah, I like that order. I'm, not sure. I'm not sure if Garib's playing aggressive Paladin, though. He played that at DreamHack. 
So if it could be aggressive power, then that could be a big difference maker. Uh, if someone ends up being curious on the, the, the stats on that one turn with the Vist thing. Oh, God. Well, uh, just to draw Vis, it's 60%. When you have 14 cards left and you're drawing five that turn, you have two of Vises. So 60% is pretty good. But then he could also have gotten Sap. Then he could also get Prep, whatever. That's too hard to calculate. Oh, man, I thought you were going to go, like, all Beautiful Mind on me. Like, you're just going to... Oh, I can't go Beautiful Mind on you. Well. I don't know. I, I haven't <laughs> learned that. I've, I've never taken stats or anything, but it's interesting. All right. I, I like it. I, I, I like it more ever since I started playing Hearthstone. I never cared for it before. Cool. Because it comes up all the time. Especially the one that comes up a lot, if you play Flame Waker, and everyone in the chat is probably like, no one cares. But if you're playing yeah. Flame Waker and, like, you have the opportunity to shoot, like, five missiles or something... Yeah, you got to calculate those you, odds. You don't, it's hard to know what the fuck percent... Oh, oops. It's hard to know what the percentage is. What the full percentage is. What the full percentage is. Yeah. yeah. That's what you meant to say. Yeah. What I meant to say. Sorry. What are you apologizing for? You didn't say anything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry for saying full. You know, I meant to say uh, what the percent. Yeah. What yeah. The percent. Well, um, I think we're probably middle middle switching players too. I'd be very surprised if Hype stayed on Warrior. It'd be like an ultimate white flag from Tempo Storm. Um, so I think they're going to eventually switch it up here. Uh, it it's looks like Warlock it is. It is Warlock next, by the yeah. way. We got confirmation from the admins. Cool, cool. Um, hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. All right, between so uh, games, are you good at this talk between games thing? Yeah, yeah well, I was about the to. Tasis and Artosis, they're really good at. It. Well, they're really good at just talking about other stuff. So what Tasis would do here would just be like, "What kind of movies have you watched, Wreckful?" And then they just kind of like talk. Oh about right, stuff. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I want to take this opportunity to do some other stuff because uh, we don't usually get many breaks in between the best of eleven. It's usually just game, 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 game. Yeah. Uh, we want to remind you guys to go to tmarkoncom slash league uh, if you want to find out more about the standings and the rules. It's a little bit complicated for anybody who hasn't watched much Hearthstone. Um, or even people who watch a lot of Hearthstone. It could be rather confusing. So you can check it out. Uh, we have a lot of chances for teams to qualify for the offline finals. And so you can find it out there. We also want to thank our sponsors at uh, G2A and Alpha Draft. They're the ones helping making this possible. So big shout out to them. If you want to check out uh, all the cool products, you can go ahead and look at the Twitch channel. I wish this is on. And then the, the last thing is that uh, we're going to have another match of Team Liquid versus Team Celestial. Uh, Team Liquid has some of your favorite players like Sho and Savitz um, and Nyria. And then Celestial is the newcomers onto the scene from the Asia region. So I'm looking forward to see if they'll do well. Maybe, maybe slightly better than how Tempo Storm's doing today. But, you know, uh, the, to be quite fair, the Tempo Storm guys before this league started even admitted to themselves that they think that they're underdogs in this league. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, Gar was saying, uh, yeah, he says, like, well, I think our team is, like, expected to finish 7th or 8th, and I think we're going to try to shatter those expectations. That's Whoa. that's what he said. I'm not saying that that's what everyone else thinks, but uh, that was kind of like the, they're, they're painting themselves as the underdogs, because they're playing without Raynad, and Raynad's, you know, contrary to what people might believe, uh, you know, according to his personality, that Raynad's actually a really solid player. Um, so, you know, they're playing without their team captain, and and the president. So it looks like they're going to have to shape it up here. What do you think, Rackful? Yeah. <laughs> All right. You're contributing a lot to this cast. I love it, man. Yeah, yeah, no problem. No, during the games, I'm talking a lot. I just don't have a lot to say outside. Like, I'm like, you know, there's all this hype stuff. Like, oh, man, like, this team is really up and coming and, like, blah, blah, blah. And this guy's the best player on that team. And I don't care about any of that stuff. Well, unfortunately, that's what people care about the most. Um, oh, really? Because the games themselves, if you don't attach names to it at all, then it kind of gets... Um, it's true, huh? It gets less exciting, I think, for sure. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Because if you imagine if there's no... It's, it's just like numbers. It's basically numbers on a screen that keeps going down and up uh, without names or personalities or faces. And then that makes it a lot less exciting, in my opinion. Okay, okay. I could be wrong. Well, let's hype this up. Let's hype this up. We, I just did, and then I asked you what you thought, and you're like, okay. I, I actually wasn't paying attention when you were talking, so then I couldn't respond. So then I just said it wasn't interesting. 
I was like trying to open the stream so I could read the chat because I haven't read the chat the whole time. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you were like, so what do you think? And it's like when your teacher calls on you in class uh -huh. and you were, uh -huh. you were like in space. You're busy passing notes to a, a cute chick in, in cute like, grill, yeah. a couple of, yeah. couple rows down. So, or boys, uh, I want to discriminate. Kappa pride. I guess, uh... The one thing... The one thing maybe the druid could have done differently last game is... The turn he comboed? I don't know if anyone cares anymore. You know, that you remember the turn he comboed? He could have, uh... Yeah, played Ancient of Lore instead. With played Sam. Ancient of Lore, heal himself, and try to have the Boombots get decent RNG. Yeah, but... I think you have to go for something like that. Do you want to bet on that RNG? When you're that far behind, I think you have to. <gasps> Maybe. Well, we'll see. Game starting. Um, looks like Gar is just going to fill in here. I think Eloise had a couple of PC issues. So, we're going with Druid versus Paladin. And I th I can't... Oh, okay, Druid's on the bottom. I was like, before... If, if you took away that Keeper of the Grove, I'd be like, well, I, I think uh, Paladin's on the, on the top here. But we did get confirmation that. Okay. Um, hmm. I think I'm gonna, so, Druid... What's up? I'm going to not try to read, go back and read the old chat because it gets too hard to... Commentates. That's your first mistake. Yeah, Never see, I, now I'm going to try not to be a rookie commentator. Never read the chat. I'm learning from you. Yeah. Okay. Not because not you don't want to acknowledge chat, but because you get sucked in, you know? Yeah, it's fun. It's like, yeah. you know, don't don't give in to the street, whatever they're trying to ask you, like the cup games on the street. Like, don't even don't even play one game, even though it's relatively innocent. Because then it's how they suck you in. All right, so Paladin uh, goes ahead, plays... Ooze onto the board. Most likely going to evoke out this wrath. No mm -hmm. wild growth again for Oskaka. Okay. And this it frees up Gar to play Knife Juggler here instead. Knife he was Juggler is going to die to Coin Keeper. Mm hmm. But then he's got the Shredder to challenge the Keeper. Put this apple on your head. Okay. Yeah, I'd be really surprised if Gar ended up going for the on. Wait, do we not have a Gara cam right now? Uh, no. I think Gara wasn't anticipating that he'd have to play right now, because I think Eloise was, according to the admins, was queued up to play. Um, Wait, but, Gara, you know, in the interest of time. What if it's Magic Amy playing? Uh, well, then the world would rejoice. Would they not? Because they found out that Magic Amy is playing the games. Okay, so, we have Keeper. And just like we just like you said, just like we said. Well, the We're gonna have a Shredder to contest mm -hmm. it, just like you said. Yeah, then we got Lotha. Now the game's gonna start. Oh wait, he doesn't have five mana, he only has... Yeah, yeah, now the game starts because you have to make decisions. Yeah, I don't I don't know about swiping this considering that you're always careful about things Muster like Mustard for, for Battle. The Shade is also asking to get punished by... Like, Consecration could easily destroy you. Yeah, but Consecration Although, is just a one for one with the Shade. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, actually, Shade, Shade in that case is not too bad, then. It's too bad Oskaka, again, missed that wild growth, because he would have a lot no, of... it's not too bad, because there's more, it's more hype this way. If it just ends 6-1, well, it's kind of funny, you know, but... Yeah. For well, if they, uh, they ended 0-6, it would have been really funny, because... I want to see a game... Tempo 6 I want to see a game 8, at least. You know? Oh, uh, we might. Swipe on the Shredder. And a okay. ship's cannon comes out. Don't think oh. about any synergy with pirates there. Okay, we have pirates coming out soon. Captain Greenskin and Paladin used to be something that people would tech in once in a while. Yeah, man. It was a good day. 5-3 True Silver. Yeah, it becomes Ashbringer. That's great. Whoa, what does Ashbringer become? Uh, I don't know. Ashbringer. Ash is, there any, is there any weapon that even has six attack? I don't think so. No, it's only a gore howl. Let me um, Ashbringer becomes like a deadly poisoned uh, oil assassin's blade or something like that. Just a deadly poisoned oiled regular dagger that hits twice as many times. It's crazy. <laughs> How about an oiled <laughs> assassin's blade? That's that's a six four weapon. Okay, that's easier. Yeah, yeah. I'm all for simplicity. Well, Scott has a couple of five drops here to to play. Um. 
The low theb challenges the body much easier, but it's very easy for your opponent to just answer with the outdoor peacekeeper. The Druid of the Claw. Is OP. <laughs> yeah, against Druid, it's amazing. Such such good tempo. What usually happens is that Paladin's able to gain tempo so effectively through cards like Mini Bot, Muster for Battle early on, um, Quartermaster, Peacekeeper, Equality, that Druid eventually runs out of resources or they play too slow um, to keep up with the Paladin's tempo. But that usually also requires Paladin to have really powerful swingy cards like True Silver Champion to answer the board plus develop. In this scenario, uh, the Peacekeeper helps him gain tempo too by making this Druid the Claw relatively innocuous. Oh, didn't get the jungle on the, the Druid though. That would have been really good. Mm -hmm. Do you still attack into it just so you can get the damage in? Yep. You're only taking one on your Belcher. Oh, you're asking if you still attack with the cannon also? Yeah. You're going to attack with the cannon. Yeah, he already used Swipe, so you don't have to worry about it as much. Even then, you, even with the chance of having Swipe, you don't attack with the cannon. Yeah, for sure. But it's worth asking, just for conversational purposes. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah, where, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, now you can have an opportunity to fight the, the board for Sylvanas. Um, or you can go ahead and try to play the clearing game, which I don't know if I like as much. I hate playing the clearing game. Yeah. I like playing the threats. I like playing the Sylvanas. Yeah. Nice. The Lotha will be really useful later on, too. Man. Uh, even though you don't use it this turn. You got a nice 6 to 8, too, combination. Yeah. Sylvanas into Ancient of Lore into Ragnaros. Yeah. Okay, so he's playing the clearing game. Maybe he's thinking I have a nice 6, uh, 7, 8. Oh. Juggles going to face every time. Okay, so he played the clearing game. I, I don't mind it actually, considering he has a, the best seven, mm -hmm. other than Dr. Boom. But Dr. Bo it's better than Dr. Boom because this guy has big game hunter right now. So it's the best seven, Ancient Allure. Right. But, um, you know. But eight's going to be bad though. It's, I mean, the Druid doesn't. It usually just struggles with being too slow compared to Paladin, but it's actually fighting at a pretty decent pace without losing too much health. Yeah. Okay. So. Innervate gives him nine mana. Hmm. So he can use that. I mean, again, the Innervate gets um, weaker the longer you take to use it. What's he going to do with nine mana? Only if he gets Wrath off the lore. I guess Sylvanas Shade. Or even Lotheb Shade, because Lotheb shuts down the spells so that Shade can't get attacked. You're playing lower, man. Yeah, I'm just giving an alternative. Because all right, all right. Or there's, there's more than one line of play. True. Sorry. Ancient of Lords is generally the most is the best, though. Okay, now for this, what do you think? Um, I like Peacekeeper and Lothab a lot. Again, tempo is the is the name of the game here. You're clearly not gonna out resource him, so if you play lay on hands, it's like, well, <laughs> you're just gonna you're you're fighting a losing battle. Because they're just gonna out card you. And then Ragnaros won't have that much impact, because you have big game hunter. Man. This is this is tough. Yeah, now it's the point where it's like, well, Ancient of Lore realistically might just be a heal tool because you don't need to draw more cards. You've got a lot of free so, it, it, The only thing that doesn't feel great about Sylvanas is you're floating that two mana, getting one armor for it. Yeah. And Rag... Well, we know Rag's well, going to be answered by Big Game Hunter, but he doesn't know. Well, Rag doesn't have too many bad targets to hit. Yeah. He didn't instantly drop Rag, though, so he's thinking about something. Mm -hmm. Lotheb, Lotheb Shade is okay. Yeah, Lothar Shea would actually be his best Although play, they could the still hand. consecrate for 9 mana if they had it, and then trade in the 3-1. Oh, Maybe he's thinking that's so bad. Right. Yeah, you're so right. That's that's a really weak play if he you knows he has know, consecration. He hasn't used consecrate, so... Ancient Lord to draw again! Yeah. Oh, man. He probably thought that consecrate thing through, huh? Mm-hmm. 
Okay. So um, now do you take a time to use Lay on Hands? Because you finally have breathing room. Well, now you just saw the Druid draw twice. You might be scared he has the second swipe. Mm -hmm. so not one to muster. You already have a 3-4 and a 3-1. Yeah, muster might even be better if you can get Quartermaster off Lay on Hands. And muster, hero power, Quartermaster. OP, OP. How do you ever lose after you do that? Uh, Hellfire. If you oh, you mean against Druid? Um, yeah, I don't know. Poison Seed, Starfall. That's oh yeah, it happens so play. often. It's crazy. It's <laughs> yeah, like you're playing against Tides every time. game. <laughs> every every other game. Let's not exaggerate here. All right, he's healing that belt up for one. Whoa. <laughs> Look at that swag. Yeah. Interesting as the Belcher too. It's like. Yeah, he cares about that HP, so that way it's not easy to remove. He gets a second lay on hands? Gar's playing a greedy paladin, jeez. Yeah. Now... Uh. Alright, there's so many options here, but... I think you just want to play the most... Sylvanas, Innervate, Druid to the Claw. Or Sylvanas, Innervate, Lotheb. Um, I like Druid. I like the Sylvanas behind the Druid. Yeah, the yeah. yeah, the thing about um, the Lotheb is that he can easily manipulate it so that way Sylvanas doesn't have much impact. Like he can yeah, suicide yeah. and steal like a 1 2, and yeah. then Druid the Claw makes it a little awkward. That's what I was thinking. 2. Yeah, well, basically, he has access to 11 oh, mana this turn. I think it's going to be the first thing we said. Sylvanas Innervate. Yeah. It's just because there's these meaty mid-sized minions are just hard, problematic to deal with. Now... Um... No! Oh, that sick. owl! Skill! That is sick. That's too sick. Uh, Emperor, owl, hero power. And just hold on to it. You won't die to a combo, will you? Hmm. Uh, wait. No. So you'd have 7 plus 12, so 19. No, you wouldn't die. What about double combo? He drew so many cards. No, he just used Innervate. He used both of his Innervates, I believe, right? So... No, he's held, he's held on to that one Innervate for a long time. But you're also talking about dying through the Belcher. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm just calculating how much damage he'd have. Um, yeah, he, he can't die if he, had, if he had two Savage Roars. Move quickly. Belchers are OP versus combo. Yeah. I'd say so. True Silver. He's gonna play just a Hero Power and then Owl. That's boring. I like the Emperor. That's fine, though. Well... Oh, we traded. Okay. That's... Oh, I think he's trying to bait out a swipe first. He really wants his opponent to swipe and then play monster for battle. <clears throat> hmm. I think his logic also could be that, based off the combat math, Emperor would also be easily destroyed by swipe after the board. Hmm. And this is the best way to deal with Sylvanas while developing Truce over Champion. Wait, how is Emperor easily destroyed by swipe behind the Spellshare? No, because if he didn't have the True Silver Champion, then the Sylvanas would survive, right? Because he couldn't get through the, the Druid Claw. So, so then... Okay. Like, how does he kill the Druid Claw without suiciding both of his minions into the Druid Claw? He needed True Silver Champion to do it. Well, yeah, you know, both... Neither minion dies, the Druid Claw, and then your uh, next turn... Next turn, your Belcher gets meleeed, and there's still an ooze. I guess, yeah. I mean, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, the swipe would have been an easy cleanup removal, I think, if he went for more. Either way. Um, well, then now... he gets him to use the swipe, and he get the Emperor to go off. I think it's fine. Yeah, okay. Fair enough, fair enough. It's definitely worth exploring. Uh, but this is another really big opportunity for Druid to start fighting back, because it just struggles with dropping minions and removing, and it's starting to gain better options with a full hand Etlin like that getting reduced by the Emperor. Okay, so now we're gonna have the Emperor. Yep, from Druid. The hero power. Yeah, I would... 
also be okay with with muster for battle, I think. But I think the Emperor might just hero power might be better. The thing is, they're both weak to the same thing. Well, once it's again, funny. you have the slime, so you you can't. Your Emperor doesn't die this way. Slime OP. Yeah, it would need to be swipe plus something else. Man. Wow, he's really trying to take this into the control well, stages here. Now the Emperor is going to reduce more cards. But, um... Hmm. He gives, like, the initiative to the Druid in a way by doing this. Yeah, I like I like just dropping it because if the, even if the Druid somehow has, you know, if he has Swipe plus Wrath or something and he removes your Emperor... There surely has to be, like... Like, I think Garo just really wants to take this into the control stages of the game. Because um, he's really confident that Paladin, his Paladin can outlast Druid. He might even have, like, two equalities then. Yeah, I guess he's... Because Lay on Hands number two is really clunky. Even if it's for seven mana, you don't really get to play it. So, you know, getting that mini bot was really good, but still he has a quality Consecration. He's got uh, Emperor as, like, a reasonable threat. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Yeah, I would actually really guess that he's playing two Equalities because he's got, like, Acolyte of Pain. That's a really slow card for Paladin nowadays. They don't really need Acolyte because they're trying to just play Tempo. Now the Druid's turns are getting crazy, but this is when the Paladin has work there ready. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Lothab's down to protect from that for this turn. But next turn he's probably going to get a quality Consecrated if he manages to have a big board. Um, Asgara... If he plays out True Silver, he's getting harassed. But uh, he might be thinking to True Silver the mm. Lothab and finish it with the mini bot or True Silver the Shredder and then uh, Emperor. Yeah, I think the finishing off the Lothab makes more sense because it's, it's better protected. Putting less on the board. Right? Yeah. It's guaranteed taking five damage off versus the Shredder. Might not change anything. Might like a four four pops out from Mill Health Mana Storm and you're back in the same boat. Lothab really does complicate stuff too. If you also um Man. It's roping. True silver. Yeah, if you, if you play silver, that Emperor already, man. If you played that Emperor last turn, I think it would have gone it would just live. Two full swipes, yeah. <sighs> Patient assassin. Oh my god. That's what we were talking about, meleeing the thing versus the Lotha versus the Shredder. Crazy things yeah. happen. I feel like the Druid's gonna top deck swipe right now. Not that he really needs it's, swipe. It's been a, it's been a long time Wait. since he's gotten the second swipe, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It's about time. Well, Harrison. So King if the Druid had down, Savage Roar there, he would have won. Oh yeah, you're right. That would have been exact lethal. No, I would have had one overkill because he just does the hero power to the face. That belongs in so Harrison yeah. Jones allows him to develop a really big board, but how greedy does he want to go? Because ultimately, you can't go too greedy because his opponent hasn't played Consecration Equality yet. Yeah. And you know about that possibility. Mm. I wonder if Gara actually has really high All his, drops, all his remaining drops are bad right now. Because Rag. Gara? No, oh, you uh, mean Dr the Druid. Druid. If the Druid does anything else this turn, it's bad. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he might, might be really kill. tempted to just kill and like with the patient assassin, assassin kill the emperor, and then pass. Yeah, it's like enough on board to quality consecrate too. It's not wrong. Hit the face. All right. Wow. Hmm. Uh, consecrate by itself only leaves the loath up. But then you still die to a Force of Nature Savage War combo. Yeah, exactly die. Yeah, it's okay to part ways with the quality here. It gives him room to play Pilot Shredder and the Muster for Battle. But most Pil likely he'll just hero power. You might Pilot Shredder Acolyte. Oh yeah, Acolyte might be much better. Yeah, I like that. Okay, um... Now... Well, you're not. How much are you worried about dying at all? Uh, you've seen both true silvers. 
Mm-hmm. But you've and only consecrate, seen one yeah. consecrate. So you were you could die to consecrate. Mm-hmm. You don't want to use this keeper because you know you need it against uh, Tyrion. Tyrion. Mm. But drawing cards off that acolyte, like if you play Doctor Boom, <laughs> he just he might get two, maybe even three cards off that acolyte. Yeah, uh, it seems like the play he would go with is Doctor Boom keeper innervate hero power. But or Doctor that's like, Boom, that's like the best tempo play this turn. Or Doctor Boom shade innervate hero power. So he went with the first one. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. I don't like that. So I think he's. I like it the other way. You silence. You silence the acolyte. You melee the thing for one. You don't. After you melee it, you don't die to consecrate anymore because you got that one armor. So that consecrate that he just stopped like would not kill you. He'd be one off, right? Mm-hmm. Well. But, we oh no! Also, muster. He would kill you with the lights justice. Yeah. You know. Yeah, okay. he's way ahead he of you. He would have died. Man. He would have died. He would have died. I really I still don't like it though, right? You like it the other way better? I mean, me? that's because I'm a strictly oh, inferior yeah. player to Oskaka. So yes, I do like that play you suggested. Um, I think uh, Gara would want to kill off... Oh, he's going to play Muster first. Makes sense. More bodies for the boom bots. Yep. In a way, you want it to hit your Accolade, but... No, maybe you did the attack first. Yeah. Yeah, you actually increased the chances of Acolyte getting hit, so you can yeah. draw two cards. Okay, he doesn't want to risk it hitting the Shredder. But he, the other one could just hit the Shredder next turn, so I don't see the point. Right. Okay. Hit the Acolyte! No, just some some of the, the one twos. Now that's the second. Um, ooh, savage world coming a little bit too late. But that that's the second keeper too, right? So now if he draws Tyrion, he's gonna be able to ride it all the way home, hopefully. But I'll well, Skaka... better since he's dead too, unless he he has to force of nature clear stuff, and the Shredder has to give something small. It's Doomsayer time, right? Yeah, pretty much. This is pretty unlucky for Onskaka Onskaka to not get the second swipe this long. He's drawn through like pretty much his entire deck, right? I think so. No, Ooze is not gonna do it. But it does keep him alive barely. And that's a second force of nature too, so there's no more uh, full combos, just minions. That can do Savage Roar. I wonder Gara can't draw two damage this turn, can he? Probably not. No. Oh man, Pilot Sky Golem. That's one meaty card. Oh, and I said uh, two damage. I, I meant four damage because he already consecrated. There's, there's really no, there's really no way for him to stabilize at this point unless he draws. <laughs> unless he draws a swipe, right? I guess swipe is good. But even then, what comes out of the Pilot Shredder or Pilot Sky Golem, excuse me, can still threaten. Yeah, him. and the problem is you have to. If you you don't attack the acolyte first, you're giving him an extra card mm -hmm. to swipe. Yeah. But you want to swipe first to see if you can kill it with the. What's That's the worst true. four drop? Do you know? The worst four drop is like Pit Lord. No, it's like a That's... five six. Oh, oh, you mean the weakest? The yeah. The weakest. Uh, the weakest would be like um, Mogishan Warden. It's like a one seven. <laughs> nah, actually, Baron Rivendare might be better because it doesn't at least have pawn. Okay, so now you Savage Roar clear this, right? Yeah. And then... Melee the left guy with yeah. the face. I guess you... Yeah, you don't want to play Big Game Hunter, but... Is there anything else you'd rather keep it for? I think you need the presence on the board. Yeah, yeah. You do, because what are you saving for? If you save for Dr. Boom, you lost the game. If you drop yeah. the Dr. Boom. Yeah, exactly. Tyrion finally comes into the hand, but both these guys have had a slugfest, and that second Tyrion, quality there. Yeah. Tyrion's pretty much checkmate. Uh, it is checkmate, I think. Yeah, he already uses Harrison, right? There's no way. Dude, too bad he's not Medivh, and then he could, like, say checkmate. Because when you can see... Oh, is that what he says? Yeah. That's pretty sick. <laughs> wow, two wins here for Temple Storm. One for Hype, one for Gara. And Oskaka, yeah, once back? again... Not getting wild growth. What if he goes uh, 06? Wait, 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 wait. It's time? It's time for uh, 
Alois, is that how you pronounce it? Eloise. Alois? Really? It's Eloise? I can understand if you said Alo like a Alois or something like that. Cause I don't Lois know, is... man. Look at that name. What's it? That's just, a regular there many, name. There are too many vowels in that name. I guess Gara's There's name is a lot of vowels. vowels. Wow. Height doesn't fit any. He doesn't have enough vowels. Yeah, he's got the weird Y going on like you. Hmm. Okay, so Eloise. <laughs> so Eloise. Play Warlock now. Jesus. Eloy, Eloise, Eloise needs to play Warlock yeah. now. Yeah, like Lewis, right? But Eloise. Eloise. Yeah. E. Lewis. Something like that. Internet like Lewis. <laughs> Electronic <laughs> Lewis. <laughs> All right. Electronic Lewis coming out with the Warlock. Don't know what type of Warlock it is. But both yeah. types, or even all three types, probably good against Druid. Well, Handlock is a little scary sometimes um, because of the combo threats. But I would assume that Eloise is bringing out the zoo here. All right, here we go. Wait, is it starting? Like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't cue Handlock into the Druid. So this definitely has to be a, a zoo. We are starting, um, and we only have one POV at the moment. No wild growth again for Oskaka, but I don't even know if wild growth is more important compared to Innervate, so that way this hand could be really strong. You, uh, you don't think Handlock's good against Druid anymore? Uh, I think it's a lot weaker. In the past, it was pretty strong, um, but now Druids, I think, are well equipped to defeat it because it grabs the board tempo really well, and the, the combo threat just doesn't really matter if they put big taunt minions. They can... It can just generally push through. And the worst part is Druid floats you above like 15 to 16 health all the time. So the Molten Giants are not even that relevant. Yeah, yeah. But I can understand uh, where like... I mean, but if, if you're... Yeah. Sometimes your first two drops... Sometimes a Druid just can't answer your first drop. And yeah, exactly. Like right. Twilight Drake with no Keeper and then just like trades like three for one. <laughs> yeah. You just can't do anything. All right. So Eloise looks like she has... Couple early game plays, but relatively slow. Oh! Wow, growth. Uh oh. This is the game. I think Force no! and Voice can end at six two oh, here. Oh no! But this is a this is like not one of the great matchups to get um a wild growth in because it just but means the wild, gro wild growth with two keepers in hand is pretty crazy. And yeah. he'll have point Doctor Boom later. Yeah. It's true. Keepers, keepers is one of your best cards. But these are still kind of awkward keepers in a way. It's like yeah, they're not amazing keepers. You're keeping this abusive, probably. Yeah. Or you're silencing the. Yeah, probably silence the Haunted Creeper, and then he power overwhelming's void terrors. Oh my god. Actually, E. Lewis could still win. Like we were saying before. Before this whole series started, remember you said the Druid's gonna draw wild growth one out of six games, and I said Zoo could still be Druid with wild growth. Yeah, you're even yeah. mentioning it. We said that. Mm-hmm. You're okay, absolutely so Lewis right. Lewis is going to come out now. <laughs> I think it's time for Power Overwhelm Void Terror. Party what time. What about uh, Knife Juggler and Acidic Swamp Ooze, though? Yeah, but you can go party right now. Yeah, it's true. I think you just party time right away. Uh, yeah, I don't mind going for a big power play immediately. It forces him to have the swipe. And you get, you get to cash in on the, the one ones now. The Void Terror becomes a... It's big game hunter target no matter what it, what you do. Yeah. It's going to be an 8 and... 5. If you use it on the... If you use it on the spider and hit the, the shredder, right? Yeah, because it'll have 2 health remaining. Both are really viable plays. 8, 5... No! No! Do the 8, 5! No! Oh. That was not nearly as exciting. Yeah, and I think I'm guessing she just wants to pull out the the void terror, so that way it's just a three three. Oh man, okay, the swipe being pulled though, that could have been disastrous. I think, right? Um, the shredder well, could have most likely. Oh no, no, he had the void. He had the void caller still. I don't know. It's close. Eight five. I must safeguard the. Or maybe she's trying to bait out the keeper, so that way the void terror is even better. Is that also a possibility? I think so. Yeah. 
But, I mean, you are giving them a little more time to get big game, Hunter, which you know they run. That's true. Very true. And it's not like you really want them to silence your void. Void color is always good. Knife Juggler here will be pretty strong. Like, if you play Knife Juggler, uh, abusive. Knife Juggler abusive, and you actually attack the Keeper. Fuck it. Oh, I, sorry. Uh, screw it. <laughs> Put this apple on your head. Yeah, forget about it. Forget about it. You can attack either one. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. We're definitely... Just you know, which do you hate more? One. Do you hate centaurs more, or do you hate pandas? Oh, she doesn't hate anyone. Get in there and fight, okay. Very meticulously just trying to juggle uh, at the optimal rate, but uh, the swipe is still pretty effective. Okay, so I have a swipe example. and a hero power. Oh. Is that even better, maybe? You clear out all the ones with two health. And then you still have your swipe for all these one health minions next turn. Hmm. Maybe you have to swipe now, though. Hmm. If you swipe now, you're only leaving one guy on the board with one health. Yeah, that's true. It feels like swipe might be too good to pass up. But you also... Hmm. Uh, yeah, I, you'd be playing around Defender of Argus, too, by um, swiping now. Yeah. I mean, some YOLO artists... Might have coined Dr. Boom right there. <laughs> the, art, the artist formerly known as YOLO. Because <laughs> they'd be it's, dead. It's the art of YOLOing. <laughs> yeah. right. uh, I'm not going to read that book. Okay, now. I think E. Lewis should just YOLO artist here. Just Knife like power overwhelming. Power overwhelming your ooze. Face. Void terror, just the ooze then. Not super YOLO, Void Terror, the Knife Juggler, too, you know? I yeah. Wonder. I like that play. Half YOLO. Here we go. Let's do it. Uses all your mana. Wait, what's full YOLO? Oh, full YOLO's eating your own. Full YOLO's <laughs> when you do the troll. Oh, that's, only, that's very little YOLO. That's one no, third YOLO. No, she's around big game. She's making One third blood. YOLO? Yeah, yeah you know. That's the force of nature, though. Oh, you're right. I don't like that. Force nature is a clear. You power overwhelming there, man. She's playing around big game hunter into like wrath or keeper of the grove. Either way, there's a lot of ways for Druid to answer if they had the perfect cards. So she decided to make it a little bit weaker. I don't like isolating this power overwhelming though in the hand. Is the second yeah. keeper or the big game hunter? Yeah. And then with the four health one, there are a lot of answers also. Mm -hmm. The second swipe worked, took full clear. The keeper always worked anyway. Uh, I don't like okay, it. Okay, that fills out the curve. Why yeah, using all our mana. Okay. This power volumming is never going to do as well as hitting before and buffing. Yeah, mm -hmm. you double dip on its damage. Is it time to boom? It might be. Unless you want to yes. drake into shade to get more targets out, but... Dr. Boom uh, also is pretty appealing. Uh, I don't think you ever Drake in a shade. I think you either Lotheb in a oh, shade. Oh, Lotheb in a shade. Yeah, that's also possible. Or you Boom. Yeah, you'll need more cards. You're right. Lotheb shade. Boom. I guess you could consider Shredder Keeper. But, you know, it's probably not. Shredder Keeper feels like the weakest combination because yeah. you put out the least stats and you have the least impact on the board. I like, I like Lotheb. I like... I like Lothop Shade, I like Boom, I don't know. The Boom gives you more potential to fight back, because you can guarantee clear off the the, the first threat, and then you can use the Boom like box the, to clear. I like, yeah. I like Dr. Boom. If you Boom, are you going to coin Hero Power for one armor? Four, and if you had Power Overwhelming Doom Guard, that's 13. No, it wouldn't matter. So you shouldn't, it doesn't really matter if you do that. Doom Guard is lethal, by the way. Ah, well. Nerubian Egg is interesting. Because that might survive the boom bots, and then that's another power overwhelming target. I mean, this is starting to get pretty close. You drop the egg. 
You drop the egg before you uh, hit a boom bot, if you're going to hit a boom bot with implosion. Maybe she's implosioning Dr. Boom. Yeah, I guess it has the higher impact if you implosion Dr. Boom and it hits for four. Then this he case can eventually die, but he doesn't die to the void. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay, so yeah. uh -oh. okay. attack face, face. first. Read the average result After here. After you attack first, but I still hit that a boom bot. With mm -hmm. Okay, so gets interesting now. Uh, terrible. Do you... yeah. You... Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's science that egg, right? Drake, do we have second swipe still? Hmm. We do have second swipe, but I think you'd rather work with the resources you have now. Second swipe. So I think I'd rather kill off the void caller. Drake with Swipe yeah, would even I, pop the egg. I think I'd kill the Void Caller with Dr. Boom and then silence the egg so that way he doesn't pop anything. <clears throat> and then um, just trade the Boom Bots and then play Lothed, cross your fingers. Oh no, you can play Lothed in Shade. You have enough mana to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, it hits face. It's not good. I it's can't see the screen right now. Yeah, I know. Spectator mode bug is trolling because of Druid. The druid choice uh, ends up blocking some of the screen because of spectator mode. Mm -hmm. All right, so Doom Guard is still lethal, but there's also the the point of concern where Eloise might just die to the backswing because there's 14 damage on board. Oh, Doom Guard's not lethal. Not lethal. Uh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Would you look at that? Well, does she tap? That's a question. Uh, that power volume just been. I want to point out the power volume just sat in the hand the whole time. Yep. And if it was used on the void terror, yep. You're not gonna find a better use for it. Probably right. Does Doctor Boom might not? It's not gonna do anything either. Just the boom. Okay. Bots I wonder. Itself. She, she's not tapping, so I wonder if she's thinking about does just Savage Roar kill her? Seven, nine, four, two. Yeah. Yeah, it does. There's really nothing she can do about a Savage Roar finish. So she, she might as well tap then, probably right. Uh, what about just like four damage, like swipe or drew the claw? There's fourteen. She go to nineteen. Yeah, she died at just like a swipe or drew the claw if she taps. It's true. Yeah, so she ends up passing. Ancient of Lore still gives chance to draw into it. To swipe. Mm-hmm. Into Savage Roar, you win. No, into yeah, it has a chance to draw into Savage Roar. And if you don't, you just trade down the board. And you could draw into the coin swipe. Into the coin swipe, into the boom bots killing you. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah, man, it happens. Swipe wouldn't be lethal either. It just gives him help, uh, opportunity to yeah, kill the Yeah, it just helps with the board. Oh, he's going for the Don't really start safe route. He's probably going to heal himself. himself. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Doomguard is still lethal. She hasn't played a Doomguard yet, right? Nope. Oh, Doomguard is one off, huh? Because it does nine? No, because the Boombots would end up uh, surviving. Uh, the Boombots end up dying because of the power bombing, right? She well, has, has, a chance. To <laughs> has to hit face. Has Oh, oh no, my god. Firewolf Guess into Doomguard is lethal, so we win. By we, I there mean L.E. L. Lewis, which everyone was rooting for E. Lewis. So I could say we, I think. Well, there it is. The, the Druid's down 0 3. <laughs> oh, she's so happy. <laughs> oh, did you see the roar? She roared. Yeah. Well, uh, she's really happy because, like, oh, look at that. that. Doomguard was her last out. Like, she well, needs to, to win be, right It had to be one damage into Doomguard or the Boombot hitting face. Oh, or it could be second power overwhelming, actually. Second power overwhelming would have been fine. Yeah, it had to be damage mm -hmm. and doom guard at the same turn. So. Well, it's 5 3 now. It's still a long way, though. They're only halfway through. It's been, it's been an hour since they've uh, started this comeback train, but it's, it's a pretty long road to go back 6 5. But I think it's starting to become like more of a that reality. Can, that can stress me out. Yeah, that, that, that game was very I want stressful. the series to go to the oh, end. I don't okay. care who wins. Yeah. I actually, okay. I think I want the series to go to, oh, Scott, 
Oskaka loses five, and he wins the sixth one. And it's game 12 or whatever. Yeah. Okay, I, I think uh, it'd be really, really cool to see, like, Oskaka get to 6-5 and then win two. I think that'd be really fun. Because then it's like, oh my gosh, he almost just broke down, but he managed to just barely eke, the, like, eke out a win. But you pointed it out, man. Druid with the wild growth, still not a guaranteed win. Even though people exaggerate all the time. Yeah. Um, now against these against three Zoo, classes. Against you as a Druid, you could lose with any hand. Yeah, it's true. I think. Maybe maybe because not if you have Dr. Boom on like turn three or whatever. All right, Gara's going to queue up his Hunter. This mid-range Hunter seems to be a pretty strong choice against uh, the Druid. It should hypothetically be able to win with a lot of tempo. The big question marks are Death Lord and... Well, just Death Lord. <laughs> I don't really know what else. Uh... Oh, Death Lord, and if you draw Hyman for turn six. Yeah, but Druid can't answer Hyman. Even if you have a keeper, you can't kill it because it, you, it's your turn six. You can keeper it, but you can't do five damage to it. Almost ever. What's increasingly more frustrating too is that Oskaka's revealing more and more cards. So by now they know about cards like Ragnaros and they know about cards like Harrison Jones. So it becomes better to play around this druid. The more the more it loses, the weaker it gets in a way. Mm -hmm. In Conquest, the deck's uh, highest point of strength is in the first game it plays, and then just loses more and more. You no, know, I'm thinking. It's really unlikely that he wouldn't have a single bow with traps, but we we didn't see a bow out of Gara yet, right? No, we, yeah, we we saw a bow. Remember he um The yeah, person who bowed that, that, that Misha was the other guy. Chalky. But he does have an eagle horn bow. There's no way. Yeah, everyone has it, right? The quite there is people who cut one bow. Surprisingly. Yeah. Um I'm actually like Pretty interested because I think the final game will be hyped versus Oskaka if we get to that point. There are Druid mirrors too, and Oskaka could easily just Wild Growth or Innervate, and Eloise doesn't have it. But I want uh, Eloise to have two Wild Growths, and Oskaka has nothing. He just gets run over because then we can see her do a little happy <laughs> dance again. <laughs> oh my god. Get yeah. this guy a glass of water. Me? All right. I yeah. got a glass of water right here. We're good. Thirsting too hard, bro. Right, Oskaka, Oskaka gets the innervate. Wrath is also really useful against Hunter. Gar needs to continue the comeback train here. And you know what? I mean, at least if Tempo Storm loses here, they're still the exact same record as Cloud Nine, so, so it's, uh, they wouldn't be Jones? the worst. They're not. They're going to keep Harrison Jones? Maybe. I mean, the weapons. Uh, are plentiful in this Hunter deck. It is Does really Skara scary. have Glaive Zuka? I don't think he has Glaive Zuka. We didn't. We saw he played a pretty long game. We didn't see Glaive Zuka. Mm. Oh, Wild Growth! You know the Wild Growth is uh, pretty important for the Druid, but at the same time, it's like the tempo that the the Hunter can gain is still really impactful. Because of things like freezing trap. Yeah, I can't see Gar's hand yet. Okay, I see it. <laughs> oh, he runs tracking. Yeah, tracking is really interesting too, just for the purpose of being able to find the card that you need. I remember like players were talking up tracking so much. They were saying like part of the reason why Hunter's so effective is because and then everyone stopped running. Yeah, they had Unleash the Hounds and they had Tracking. Uh, and Unleash the Hounds would help them draw so many cards with Starving Buzzard. So it's like, no matter what, they were able to draw most of their deck. Buzzard Unleash was insane. Yeah. Uh, You're living in the past, bro. Buzzard Unleash now is, is trash. It's garbage tier. Yeah, now yo, all you can do got, with Buzzard it, Unleash... It's crazy to think how many times ball? Buzzard Unleash got nerfed. If you yeah. go way back, Buzzard used to have two health. And it cost two. And Unleash yeah. was two mana. Uh, yeah, 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 at least yeah. used to do something different way, way back. But and then, um, then at least was three mana, and now Buzzard's five mana. It's unplayable. Mm -hmm. but when Buzzard yeah. at least was four mana, you could you could have like ninety percent win rate queuing Hunter. You know, until you fought another Hunter, then you fifty fifty. But ninety percent against everything else it was so OP. <laughs> 
You're you're, you're actually uh, triggering me really hard right now. I'm, I didn't want to think about that times, but uh, oh, you didn't play Hunter back then. I was I was a scum. I played Hunter. I did it. I, I no, I I played everything but Hunter. I was one of those guys. Oh. That's actually how I learned Miracle because I wanted to beat Hunter so bad that I'd learned how to play Miracle. Right. Yeah. I was I, I played Miracle, but I was also hunting. Cause uh, yeah, you had that one time where you sat down and laddered from like twenty five to Legend, right? It was just Hunter. Hmm. Yeah. You yeah. Did one it in one sitting. Yep. And I was like, I don't even understand how you how you can live with yourself after that day. Dude, you just, you just buzz on leash, you just smile over and over. Yeah. <laughs> but every time. How do you like sleep at night? I don't know. It's kinda weird. I don't, I don't feel like I'm I'd feel worse playing face hunter. At least I wasn't playing a face hunter. You know, I'm sitting there <laughs> dropping high mains and stuff. Sure, sure. One thing I didn't like about this game, by the way, that we're watching, that we forgot we're commentating this game, right? Um I think so. I think we're commentating a game, so I don't like that he coined Mad Scientist on turn one, because he had a four drop, so if he, you know, he had Shredder in his hand, and it, it hurt me, because he could, sh Mad Scientist turn two, coin Shredder, turn three is really strong. But it's yeah, okay. it's, it is really powerful, like you said, but more than anything else, I think Hunters hate wasting mana, that's like a really good he mark. He had track in turn one, he actually had something to do. <clears throat> tracking gets much better as the game progresses. Though, yeah, tracking because... tracking's nice when you need something at the moment, but at least he had something to do. If you if you have tracking turn one and you have nothing to do, you do play it. Mm -hmm. This is a slight uh, placement error. You generally want to play the pilot shredder in the middle, but probably won't matter considering that Oskaka won't will kill everything but the shredder first. He'd rather kill the the knife juggler. Oh. Yeah, because you get like Dire Wolf. Yeah. Yeah, Dire Wolf or Flame Tongue Totem. Those. I, it doesn't happen very frequently, but I've seen it on occasion once in a while mm -hmm. where it actually does matter. Oskaka, by the way, does know that this could be Freezing Trap or it could be Snake Trap, and that's where the mix up is uh, really difficult to handle. If you oh, guess. Oh, wow, this swipe top deck is really powerful with spell power, though. Oh, you're right. He's got the Adjudrick sitting out there. And if the, one he... awkward, the one awkward thing, um, oh no, he knows he runs two different traps, so he doesn't care to try to kill the scientist right. before. Let's see what it is. Okay, about average result. So he has two traps up now, we just can't see it, I think, right? Yeah, and this one's about to be freezing trap, and he knows that snake's the other one, so now he can hit face here. He and wrath this. Okay. Oh, oh, he runs wait. three traps! Oh! This guy's deck is crazy! That is a plot twist. Alright. Um, so Gara, I think we're looking at a quick shot on that thing. Oh, no, we're still looking at a quick shot on that thing and a tracking and a hero power. Yeah. And then, the track. do you want to set up for our empty, empty board high main is like the strongest thing. Uh, here, what do you take? Um, Animal Companion, Houndmaster is a good turn 7. So you can take that. I wonder if Gara thinks Bo might be better. I wonder. I take. You already. You, you might take Animal Companion. You think? I take Animal Companion all day here. Hmm. Okay. Animal what Companion does have a lot of versatility. Also because. Um, okay. If you look at the bow, he just used two traps already, and he has the scientist. He's throwing away. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like an. Ex I it's gonna be an expensive fire war axe. And if you get take the bow, you probably want to play it this turn. Oh, he took scientist. Yeah, scientist for the curve. So the eagle horn bow, I thought he can even keep quick shot and utilize it later, and then use the bow now. Um, the animal companion gives him a turn seven play because then he has high main into houndmaster and animal companion, and Lothep can lock out whatever he wants. Yeah, I like that. It's it's. I don't mind this either. I just don't like the bow. Mm -hmm. Well. Now um, because... But because he actually has a... Yeah. He can actually clear the high main, which almost never happens. You have to have a 5-5 yeah. board when they drop a high main. Oh my goodness. Wow. Uh, this might be game. Uh, unless his opponent... No, no, Gar's got uh, Sludge Belchers and Lothar, never mind. But there's just two combos. That's like, you can do back-to-back -back turns. And they know explosive traps out of the way. Yeah. And the only thing remaining is a free uh, is a snake. Belcher will be nice though. Belcher versus combo OP. Yeah, so you can set up the keeper of the grove now and then kill it off. What? 
Um, it's, it's, it's a bit of an awkward. Okay, you keep her for sure. You're keeping and killing that guy, but then you just hero power. You know. Yeah, that's true. What is, I, I guess you do Tossing it. But, a wild group what else are you gonna do? You, you do that. I think. Mm. If you had a shredder right now, his turn would be so amazing and simple. Azure Drake. Okay. So he's going for the win. He's going for the combo clear. It's it's good. It's not bad. 13, 15. Ah, oh, he's two damage off lethal. Yeah. If he could he kill command, mana. if he could uh, drop Lotheb. Hmm, let's see. Okay. So he drops Lotheb. The other guy could still Savage Roar. That only does 13, so he can't die. Let's Lotheb down. Oh! Yeah. Uh, I mean, or he could Belcher, or he could... He could Houndmaster his high main, but it's even weaker to keep her, but he could Houndmaster his high main, just hit face, and uh, kill command of the 5-5. I think Lothar just seems the best. And he knows he can't die to Savage Roar because it does, uh, what did he say it does? 17. F 15 or something? 17, right? I think it does 15. 7, 6, 13, 15. Oh, 15, you're right. So... Uh, Counting is hard. Lotheb OP? Um, hmm. Yeah, Lotheb here really locked it up, unfortunately. Like, Lotheb made the going face so much weaker. What? Because now, now what does he do? Now it's too late to keep her that high man and kill it. Uh, he lost. <laughs> You're right. Uh, there's really actually nothing he can do here. He needed to have like a second swipe drawn off the top, right? That was like his only out. No, I mean, he swiped for nine mana. What does he do with that? Well, at least he helped him control the state of the board a little bit. Uh, aside for 9 mana, he's still lost this turn. Because he can't keep her. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Well, no, if, was... he had, if he had swipe for 9 mana, he'd suicide into high main and then swipe 5 2 twos across her. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. You're right. Uh, I mean, yeah, either way. You're we right, we know right. that it would have been, uh, it would have been still really hard to win. Because you survive, but do you win? And that's. The ultimate question there. That's four in a row for Tempo Storm. Osaka. Also, something to note too is uh, Man, if, just see how he drew two shredders. If he had one of those shredders the previous turn, yeah. If he had one of the shredders the previous turn, I guarantee you. And uh, obviously, he would have mm. keepered the high main, killed it, drop a shredder, and then he wins the game from there. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah. But um. Plus I OP. Yeah. So there's a chance. There's a hope. And it's growing. Gar is also done for the day, by the way. His job has been accomplished. He did lose game, I believe. But, uh, oh, he lost two games. So now we, we go for the Druid Mirror. We go yeah. for the, uh, the skill mirror. Mm -hmm. So, who do the you... The Druid uh, Mirror is probably the most coin flippy matchup, I think, that we will see today. Let's think. Who's going to draw it? Uh. And then... If it ends up going Tempo Storm's way, we're going to have five games in a row for Force and Boys, followed by five games in a row for Tempo Storm, into the hardest matchup that we'll probably see today. If there's any matchup worse than Freeze Mage versus Druid that we saw, it has to be Druid versus Warrior. So, like, Tempo Storm's playing for tiebreakers in their mind, because I think they really don't think they can take out Control Warrior against uh, the Druid. I think Druids actually kill Freeze Mages harder than they kill Warriors. You think so? I, I'm willing I played, to say I played all those things quite a bit. Yeah, it's pretty close, I guess. I would actually not even put it that close. I would say like Druid versus um, Warrior is just so awful for the Control Warrior. Well, it's if the so Druid doesn't, if the Druid actually has a slow start, you can win. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, maybe you're I mean, you're, you're probably right. It's Control I'm, Warrior. I'm, I'm, I, I mean, you you feel he has a slow start. Then you start shield maiden, shield slamming stuff on like turn seven. Mm -hmm. One shotting ancient allures while you drop a five five. You're probably correct. Oh, so wait, who's that with the wild growth? Which one is that? I believe Oskaka has the wild growth. Oh man, that's really good for Oskaka. Although Eloise still can mulligan for uh, innervates and wild growth, and I think. 
Innervate's more powerful than Wild Growth in this matchup, just because you get the immediate return on tempo, and Wild Growth's a little bit sometimes too slow. Um, the Wild Growth's really but good. If you have when you're neither, parking. if you have neither, you just instantly lose because you can't even drop anything. The first thing, yeah, you have to wait till you just sit there, hero powering turn two and three. Most of the time, sometimes you have a shade, uh -huh. I guess. But. The alternative is that um, sometimes your opponent Wild Growth and has nothing to follow up for. A couple turns that gives you turn time to play stuff, and then yeah. consequently you're able to uh, you're able to seize the board. If he keeps his whole hand, he has coin wild growth into shade into keeper into lotha. But I don't yeah, but keeper's not really keeper's not really a four. So you want a shredder there? Oh, Eloise has a uh, wild growth too. Oh, oh but wow, it's Kaka's energy. It's no, no but Kaka's it's... hand is terrible. Yeah, starting with combo is terrible. But, oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, Eloise is the... Wait, oh, wait, wait, yeah. Uh, so, Oskaka is the one that has wild growth and uh, the, the really good hand afterwards. And the, Eloise has, like, the wild growth and innervate, but nothing after that. Uh, so, basically, it's two cards that are sitting I there. Only, by the way, guys, I actually don't care who wins the whole series. I just wanted it to go to the last game. So that's why you I really said, feel oh, the need to keep clarifying that every. I, I think I, everyone's gonna be like, "Oh, they just, you know, they're just Temple Storm bias, blah blah." You care about like the fifteen people saying that? I'm sorry. Yeah, I shouldn't. You're right. Yeah. I get trolled a lot too. You know, I, I'm bad. I'm bad against Twitch chat. They they farm me. They just they troll farm me. you. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. You don't I'm get affected of... by by Twitch chat. Uh, I mean, everyone gets affected by Twitch chat at some level. The people who say they don't are actually the ones that are impacted the most by it. In my oh. Um, she picks up the Ancient Lord, by the way. That's really That's good nice. Innervate, That's Lord, really next big. turn. The fact that Oskaka also has uh, a couple of options here is interesting. Double five drop is good, but he also has shade into five drops into coin Ancient of Lore. And the shade gets better now, or is better now than I think you shade later. Because in the later stages of the game, Shade becomes much weaker. It's just less significant minion. It's basically like a 3-3 or 4-4. Four, four, but you can get it now, which might end Although, up turning into uh, Yeah, if, if, I guess if five. you're coining a 5, you're probably never going to play the Shade anyway. Because you're going to have another 5 next turn. And then the turn after that, I guess, worst case scenario, you have Harrison. And then you have Lores. You just, you're basically yeah. just saying, I'm not even going to play the Shade this game. But playing, I, I don't mind either way. I, I think... You, Probably he's gonna play the shade. But. Well, funny enough, isn't Harrison even like slightly better? Because if you if you knew the hand, like he's gonna go out for the Ancient of Lore. I guess it doesn't really truly matter, but the the Harrison Jones would have been able to answer the Ancient of Lore immediately. It matters. It matters. Yeah. Okay. With that top deck, I think you still Ancient of Lore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and certainly. Now See? A second innervate. Okay, so some of these tempo plays might be so big. Combo on turn seven. Uh, this swipe is five. That might be the play. Just kill the Ancient of Lore. Yeah, although Druid the Claw still stops the Ancient of Lore too. Hmm. Druid of the Claw loses... Uh, you lose the whole board to swipe because if they swipe your Drake, then they melee your Druid Claw and oh, you're, you're right, nothing. Then they pass their turn effectively, and you still you have don't. six mana to heal still. power and play like Shade. I think you still don't like it. Oh, he's doing it. Well, she doesn't have swipe, so mm -hmm. she she has Force of Nature, which effectively accomplishes the same thing. Um. Yeah, force of nature one for one with the Drew to the claw, if you want to. She might like um. She hit the face like because she has combo next turn. But no, she doesn't have enough to kill, so hitting the face might. She has two force of nature, so this is definitely something that is not bad at all. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Did you kill the Drake. You beat out hero power. I think, I think you do, yeah. Uh oh, Popo is out for you, Rekful. Oh. Uh oh. I don't even hear that sound anymore. They come from me so often. <laughs> yeah. All right. 
So, uh, there's one player who has Dr. Boom next turn. Yeah. Oh, she didn't top deck Dr. Boom. But she still has uh, nine mana available to her, and the Azure Drake allows there's, her to pick yeah. up maybe the... Shredder, Shredder is the best draw from Drake. If you don't draw... Question is, if you don't draw anything to play, do you innervate keep her face? Because you might. You can't combo the next turn anyways, though. Yeah, it's true, but you still might. Because then you follow up with uh, Belcher, which will protect that keeper to live uh, for the next Yeah, and, and you have Wrath. If you swi if opponent swipes to clear the board, then what to do? you can... Mm. Yeah, you can definitely answer with Belcher here. Power. Yeah, I think I, I, think I like that boy. I don't mind just Belcher, trade. just Belcher here too. She, she, she seems like a safer player now that I'm seeing. She plays so safe, like that one time where she didn't power overwhelm the face and make the bigger Void Terror. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't even know if I consider that safe. I don't know what that is. It's like she's just scared to be GH, but okay, it's Doctor Boom time. It's definitely the best way to capture the board. You don't really need cards here. It has to be Dr. Boom time, because the earlier you play it, the less likely they have a big game. The other person hasn't played an Ancient Oh, has played one Ancient Lore, but the earlier you play it, the less likely they have a big game. Ancient Lore, you don't need to draw any more cards right now. You have the card you want to play on turn 7. Dr. Boom is the best card. So... There it is. Agreed. And now... Ugh. Okay, the, the play here... Is you Azur Drake and you top deck Big Game Hunter? <laughs> sure. That's the play, right? And then just like, win. Yeah. If you don't get it, you Wrath for four on Dr. Boom and kill it with the Belcher, maybe. Yeah, I also wouldn't be poor either. A second Savage Lord. That's 22 damage on turn 10 if the yeah. game goes that long. Yeah. So what she might do is Wrath and. She might just go for that? Okay. Next turn, just keep her face <laughs> for two. <laughs> Okay, so now these boom bots might work some magic here. Oh, it doesn't need to. You got swipe and innervate. So now what? Well, he, he'd Host rather Kaka drop do. lore. Maybe you check if boom bots work magic first. They, boom bots always kill hazard drakes, man. They're like, it's there's a magnet or something. It's crazy. When I'm playing, that's the thing do, right? I hate about playing rogue. Every time I'm playing rogue, Doctor Boom comes down and I lose like three minions to two boom bots somehow. Ah, uh, he didn't trust in the magnet. Nah, I think this is the most damage overall that you can push out. That belongs in a museum. Somebody's gotta trust um, in the magnet, dude. Yeah, I think so. Oh, it doesn't attack with the shade. Okay, so now we have. Oh, that's a perfect turn. Okay. Okay, so but next turn, next turn, the other guy has eleven damage on board, and Savage Roar does eight, nineteen, twenty with hero power. Okay, so the yeah. other guy can't kill with the current cards. You have to keep her the what face here. Do? Keep her the face and play shade, and then hero power down. Because then it puts him down to twenty-two, and if he heals for hero one, power, with the hero, hero power put him at twenty-one. So. Yeah, but the key with the two Savage Wars is that it's twenty-two damage. And you, you kind of assume the shade won't always be there. So no, I'm saying put him at 21 so he can't hear a power to 23. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because if the shade dies to like a boom bot, then... Yeah. She might hear a power of the boom bot, though. That's a decision. Oh, really safe. That's super safe. That, that's what I was saying. She's really safe like that, yeah. But I don't she's not, rewarded it's, with a it's one okay, damage. It's okay, because your shade, your shade lives more often and gets to hit yeah. really hard. So. Yeah, because then the shade doesn't die to a boom bot. Oh, Lotheb off the top is really oh. big. Too. But he might. Oh, he might feel like he's safe though, because he might just kill Keeper and like, well, I don't die to a combo, so I might just Ancient of Lore, build up the board more, and attack face. It's true. Because how do you know your opponent has like four out of five cards at the hand have to be exactly what she has? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't think you can always afford to play like that. So he played it. He's going in. Damn, crazy. He could have top deck. Okay, Lothab stopped it, but he could have. Could he, if he got second Savage Roar, that would have been 22. I think she had 24 health. Would have been 23 with Hero Power. Oh, no, he couldn't even. Yeah, it would have been 23 with Hero Power. 
I think she had 24 health. Yeah, she did. Yeah. Second Savager wouldn't have killed. Uh, Force of Nature would have killed. That's a really good read from Oskaka. Uh, now, Eloise, I think she can still stay alive. Can she? No, she can't. I, I don't can't. even think that was a good read, necessarily. I think, I mean, even if she's just scared of her having... If, he, if she does, is thinking she has one combo, she could use the one combo to clear his board. Right. You know? I don't think... Yeah, he didn't think she had double combo. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Anyway. I think she'd live by one HP if she savage roars and clears everything she can. Like, she kills this, the shade, and she kills the, the Harrison Jones, and then Hero powers down the 4-2. The so she's going to have uh, 11 health? Yeah. Oh, she lives by 2 HP right now. Okay, so Oskaka can draw a lot of lethal opportunities here. That's and of... that's it! The Forsen boys finally close it, 6-4. to four. Yeah, Damn, that was really close. Like, it was really, really close. The Lothep, Lothep was like the miracle draw there for Oskaka. That Lothep, she even w he would even want to die to Angel or healing himself. Because of the shade. Oh, yeah, that's, that's five. right. Or it does 7, the shade does 7. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So wow. there it is. Force and boys take home the victory, but it was a pretty close and fun match, to be honest. Like, 6-4 was uh, a pretty respectable score. Mm -hmm. And he could have also drawn, um, like, Spelcher. He would have lived with that. Didn't need Lothan, for sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, All right, so, so that wraps up our first match of the day. You look pretty tired, Reckful. You all right, man? You hanging in there? This casting isn't for uh, noobs. Gotta be the big uh, pros. Feels bad, like, man. <laughs> You're doing fine, man. You're doing a great job. Yeah. So uh, once again, guys, to recap, we had the early game wins from the Forza Boys. They went up 5-0, and then uh, Temple Storm ended up coming all the way back to 4-1. Um, but they end that one win ended up being the reason they're able to take home the victory. And so uh, now we have three teams that getting the first wins and three teams with their first loss. Um, but don't worry. They'll be able to play next week. This is not elimination. There's eight weeks of play. Everyone will play every other team at least once. Or just once. I think that's the, the guaranteed round robin play. Okay. Well, Rekful is uh, Rekful's, uh, kind of preoccupied, I guess, right now answering. Oh, sorry. Some I, I, I was asking something about No worries, what we're bro. Doing. I got you. I was, like, tossing it to you a little bit. Oh, okay, um, okay. Tossing it to me. Oh, you want to go ahead? You go ahead. I'm bad at this well, in-between talk. Okay. Sure. You go first. Sure, right on. Okay, well, uh, what I'm supposed to do is ask you if you have any thoughts on that series, and if not, then uh, we just wrap it up and go to break, and then we go to the next series. Thoughts on so what do you want to do, Rekful? This is, this is a choose-your-own-casting adventure. Okay, right now, well, my thoughts on that series are, mm -hmm. it's really too bad that Gara <laughs> sucks. Yeah, it's really unfortunate, but uh, some people and are then, born with talent, some people are born with hard work. So. And then uh, thoughts on the next series, well... Uh, I think the Asian people are going to take it down. Because mm -hmm. those are some strong Asians I've played against them. I don't even know who the other team is. I don't remember. Okay. Um, I'm, I think Team Celestial comes in as the favorite also. But Team Liquid is definitely uh, a force to be reckoned with as well. Uh, we're going to take a break, guys. And when we come back, we're going to continue the second match of the day. It'll be Team Liquid versus Team Celestial. So stay tuned. You're watching the Archon Team League Championships. <laughs> 